Sports, college football, and the Pacific Ten Conference are proud to present the Bruins of UCLA and the Cougars of Washington State University as we welcome you out here on the Palouse in Pullman, Washington. It is homecoming Saturday at Martin Stadium. And hi, everybody. I'm Roger Twibo, and this is a big Saturday afternoon for Washington State University. They are 5-0, ranked 22nd in the nation, and they haven't been 6-0 since back in 1930 when they won the conference and they went on to the Rose Bowl. On the other hand, UCLA is struggling. They've lost their last two, and more importantly than that, they have lost seven starters off their team, including their starting quarterback, and they're still deciding who's going to start today. Now it's time for our regular feature on what's new in the world of sports, science, and technology. And welcome back here to Pullman, Washington, as the Cougars 2-0 in the Pac-10 and the Bruins 0-2, and no team has ever started 0-2 and gone on to win the Pac-10 conference title. Once again, I'm Roger Twabo, working alongside of me, John Spagnola, played his college ball at Yale 11 years in the National Football League as a tight end. And John, the burning question, Rob Walker out with the injury, is a true freshman, Ryan Fien, fifth-year walk-on transfer, John Barnes, has a decision been made? Well, what has perhaps been the most closely guarded secret since the Allied invasion at Normandy, the UCLA starting quarterback wasn't named until about five minutes before game time. Coach Terry Dunahue and his staff had to choose between two young men, John Barnes, a walk-on senior, and Ryan Fien, a true freshman. Neither quarterback has thrown a pass in Division I-A football. Neither quarterback has had any meaningful practice time until this week, and both will probably see action this afternoon. Barnes will get the start, and this will mark the third different starting quarterback for UCLA in just six games. Rob Walker out with the ankle injury. They don't know if he'll be back next week either. Meanwhile, for Washington State, John, there are no questions. Drew Bledsoe is rated as a top quarterback in the country. The only question is, how good can he be? Well, the Cougars average 492 yards a game. That's number one in the country in total offense. He's tall at 6'5". To see his receivers over the defensive line, he has a strong arm, and he can roll out. He's got quick feet. So he'll be tested this afternoon by the secondary for UCLA, which is one of the better secondaries in the country. Coming up next, here from Pullman on homecoming Saturday, the Cougars and the Bruins. Well, you're taking a look right now at Martin Stadium on the campus of Washington State University in Pullman. A little bit uh, of an overcast day. Temperatures in the mid-50s. And we are set to go in this Pac-10 game between Washington State. There's their head coach, Mike Price, in his third year, formerly head coach at Weber State. And Terry Donahue, second in seniority in the Pac-10 behind Don James, has been with the Bruins since 76. As Aaron Price, the coach's son, to kick it off, he's number 12 a left-footed booter, and Darren Washington, number 30, Ricky Davis, number 31, the return man, Davis nearest to you. And the catch, the drop by Washington, he picks it up inside the five and will bring it to the 15-yard line. Now, Washington State won the toss. They deferred. They want to put some pressure on this young man, 23-year-old John Barnes from Mission Viejo, California, a transfer from UC Santa Barbara, when they dropped their football program, a walk-on who came in last spring, last year, for the Gauchos. 23 touchdown passes as we take a look at our diehard starting lineups. Nowitzki and Parker, a couple of good ones at the tackle daily. 14 receptions at tight end. The backfield for UCLA and the receivers, Stokes and Wynn. That's Mike Wynn, Khalif Carter, and Kevin Williams, who's been injured with a hamstring. First and 10 from the 16-yard line. Just the second snap this year for John Barnes, and it's a safe one as he gives it to Darren Washington, and he's stacked up immediately, and that's what Washington State wanted to do as McClanahan makes the tackle, put some pressure on this young man and that UCLA offense. Defensively for Washington State, the uh, diehard starting lineup is Bush, Hall, Ford, and Patterson, the front four in the 4-3 alignment. McClanahan got the first tackle. Watch him. He goes sideline to sideline as well as anybody. The secondary, they call him the young and the restless. They are all sophomores. Second and 16 from the 12. Kevin Williams in the game. As they'll give it to Washington. Had a hole momentarily on the right side, but this fired up Cougar defense. This is just the situation that Mike Price, the head coach for Washington State, wanted, and that's to get a good kickoff 
to get UCLA offense deep in their own territory, and now they're faced with a third and 11, third and long situation, an obvious passing situation, and John Barnes will get to throw his first pass. UCLA playing on the turf for the first time this year. Third down and 11 from the 15-yard line. That's the tight end Daly. will split out far to the wide side of the field. Barnes. And Daly slipped on this omni-turf surface. We noticed in warm-ups a number of the UCLA players having problems with their footing. And three downs, and the Bruins are out of there. And that'll bring up a punting situation. And Darren Shager, fourth in the Pac-10 in punting, will be back near his own goal line. And Washington State will send Philip Bobo, number two, from Moreno Valley, California, one of 20 Californians on this Washington State roster, right at midfield. Left-footed punter, nice spiraling kick inside the 40. Bobo, the stutter step to the outside. He can't get the wall, and he's going to be brought down at the 39-yard line. Good job that time of the special teams, Donnie Edwards and Robert Gamble down to make the stop. There's a look at Gamble, 23, and there is a look at Drew Bledsoe. This is what he's done over his career here at Washington State University, 36 touchdowns to 25 interceptions, but he's improved immensely. As we take a look at the diehard starting lineup, Garmin is the guy to watch up front at right guard. The receivers and the backs for Washington State. Bobo within sight of the all-time reception career record here. And Shambe Fair right, the lone setback as the Cougars will take it first and 10 from the 39-yard line. They're showing two backs right now. Now they'll shift and send Bobo to the near side. The man in motion is C.J. Davis. Shambe Fair right, and he'll get about five. Off the left side with Rod Smalley. Sophomore linebacker from Solvane, California. As we take a look at the diehard starting lineups for UCLA, and this is where the injuries have really affected them. Woodfin, Sally Asaya, and Matt Werner, who's got a broken toe playing there. Smalley, Ty, Littleton, and Craig, the backers. The secondary may be the best in the nation, and these two guys, Carlton Gray and Othello Henderson, 11 picks last year for Gray, 57 tackles a year ago for Henderson, lead that secondary. On a second and five from the 44-yard line, Washington State. Will send Davis in motion to the near side. And once again, their running back, Shambay Wright Fair, will gain about three as Bruce Walker, the nose tackle, and Nikosi Littleton, the middle linebacker, come up to make the stop. And John presented with a third down situation, third and five. That's a change from a year ago for Washington State in third downs. That is true. Actually, it's about third and two. Excuse me, and, third and two. And uh, you're exactly right. Last year, Washington State was caught in an awful lot of third and long situations, and that was largely attributed to a, a weaker offensive line and poor decisions made by Drew Bledsoe. Mike Price scripts the initial 20 plays of the game here. I wonder if he's following the script right now. They've completed 41% of their third down opportunities this year, so third and two. The pass-happy Cougars have run on the first two downs. They'll throw on third, and it's dropped. It's dropped by Butch Williams, the tight end, and he simply tried to run with it before he caught it. Donnie Edwards was there on the coverage. In a third and two situation, as a quarterback, you can do just about anything. You can run the football. They were effective by running it for eight yards and two down, so I knew they had confidence there. But that was a wide open pass. Easily could have been caught by Mr. Williams. Well, in the punt is Steve Johnson on a fourth down and two, and back deep is number eight for the Bruins. Tommy Bennett. And a fair catch is called and will go into the end zone. 53 yards on the punt by Johnston. We're just underway from Pullman, 11.43 to go. First quarter. And welcome back to Pullman. Temperature 60 degrees, humidity just 50%, little or no wind at all, and the forecast is for cloudy. That's 60 degrees if you're in the sunshine on the other side of the stadium. Spagnola and I are in the shade over here. It's a lot cooler than that. As John Barnes will go out to the second series. Last time Washington State beat UCLA was in 1988 in L.A. when the Bruins are ranked number one. The last Washington State win over UCLA and Pullman was back in 79. As 
They'll go with three backs in there right now, and they'll pitch it back to Darren Washington on the right side, and he gets across the 20 to the 22-yard line. He's brought down by Dwayne Patterson, number 86. John, what's the UCLA going to try to do with this makeshift quarterback situation today? Well, they want to try to keep it as basic as possible. Terry Donahue, the head coach, was so distraught over uh, the quarterback situation that he had his team practice in pads on Thursday night. Right there, you saw they went to the power eye, and that means they're going to try and just pound the put football up front if they can and, and gain yards that way. Second down and eight. Khalid Carter, the blocker in the backfield, the play action, the pass to Stokes, and he drops the football. So we've seen two passes drop so far. Stokes, number 18 there, a sophomore from San Diego, good size at 6'5 and 215. He was wide open, John. That he was, and uh, the Washington State defense knows that UCLA is going to try and run the football, so that makes them really susceptible to play action, just like Clarence Williams for Washington State. Stokes just doesn't look the ball and tries to run before he has it, and that's uh, that's nerves, beginning of game nerves, whatever else happens to receivers at this point of the game. His players just have to relax a little bit. Good throw by Barnes, though. He's presented now with a third and eight from the 22-yard line. Pressure gets rid of it. Pass completed. It's going to be enough for the first down to the 32-yard line. A catch made by Mike Wynn, and a good throw that time by Barnes. Torrey Hunter was right there on the coverage. And Kurt Lurcher applied some pressure that time, but Barnes hung in there nicely. He did. He took a five-step drop. It looks like he looked off the safety a little bit and threw it a win. And Wynn just made an outstanding catch. He was pretty well covered on that play. There's Torrey Hunter on the, on the uh, defense, and he drove the hook route. And Wynn just went up and concentrated on the ball. First and 10, 34-yard line, 10.36 to go as Carter is in motion to the far side. They give it to Washington, and nothing there. He is stacked up by the left side, Brian Ford and Ray Hall, 69 and 92 respectively. And we noticed Kevin Williams a few moments ago testing that leg on the uh, sidelines. He's had a pulled hamstring. And I'll tell you, since the first three games, UCLA rushed the ball so well, the last two games they have done nothing on the ground. They haven't done anything on the ground. And Williams is going back to his injury, plagued ways. Last year he had a great year. He led the Pac-10 in rushing. But this year, he's had some injuries again. As a matter of fact, the last two games, they've had 36 yards against Arizona, minus four against Stanford. Out of the shotgun on second and nine, Barnes is going to keep it and throw near side, and the catch is made by Stokes at the 44-yard line. It's going to be very close to a first down. Greg Burns, number 27 on the coverage, gain of about 10 on that play, and that was some interesting action in the backfield. How many times do you see that? First of all, this is the first time we've seen UCLA go out of the shotgun. They've done that this, this year. But how many times do you see a receiver make a real difficult catch and drop the easy one? This time Stokes has to go down and make the catch at 6'5". That's not an easy catch for a big guy. He did a nice job looking it in. So a little confidence building on each play for John Barnes on first and 10. They spot it at the 45-yard line. And the pitch back will go to Washington. Not much room along the left side as he is brought down over there by Dwayne Patterson. Also coming up to uh, help on that play was number 48 for the uh, Cougars, Lewis Bush. There's a look at Darren Washington, who has uh, taken the spot in the backfield of uh, Kevin Williams. We'll probably well, see three different tailbacks today for UCLA. Sharman Shaw, Kevin Williams, and Darren Washington, who's starting right now. Shaw is a true freshman. Washington, a six-footer, 200 pounds, out of Colleen, Texas. Second down and eight from the 47. Barnes, weak side pressure, gets rid of the football from pushing and shoving downfield. It's incomplete. The pass intended for Mike Wynn and the coverage by Torrey Hunter, number 24. The pressure by Lewis Bush that time on John Barnes. As you look at Mike Wynn out of Portland, Oregon, a sophomore, six foot, 179 pounder. Torrey Hunter's the best cover guy, number 24 for Washington State, and he isn't fooled. He knows he has win all over the field. And he's great position to knock the ball down. Third down and eight for John Barnes, fifth-year senior from Mission Viejo, California, a transfer from UC Santa Barbara after they dropped their football program last year. Throwing it upfield. 
The intended receiver over there for UCLA was Kevin Jordan. And the coverage on the play by Torrey Hunter. And it's just going to be a little fly pattern. Just have the receiver run into the football. That's right. Well, the Cougars brought the blitz there. And I'm sure that's their strategy. And that is, here's an inexperienced quarterback. Let's send a couple different blitz packages at him and see how he... But he read the blitz and he threw the ball where he had to. He had to get rid of the football. Hey, but no big mistakes so far for UCLA in their first two series. As Shaker to punt. That's a nice high kick to Philip Bobo, who's waiting for the fair catch inside the 10, back to the 8-yard line. Time out on the field, 8.36 to go first quarter. No score. This is the campus of Washington State University in Pullman. This is known as Friendship Mall, right near Holland Library. Interesting, both of these head coaches played at the schools they're now coaching at. Uh, Mike Price played here at Washington State uh, for a year before finishing up at the University of Puget Sound. Of course, Terry Donahue was a defensive tackle at UCLA in his playing days. First and 10 from the 8-yard line for Drew Bledsoe. And Washington State, no score here in the first quarter as he goes back to pass, and that was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Looked like number 66, London Woodfin, who's taking the place of the injured Mike Chalinski. Coming up here on ABC Sports Monday Night Football, Cincinnati Bengals, Pittsburgh Steelers live at 6 Pacific time on ABC Monday Night. Two young coaches in the NFL, Bill Cowher and Dave yeah. Shula on that Monday Night bat matchup. Got off to an early good start this year and both are fading a little bit. Second and 10 from the eight. Bledsoe usually gets off to a good start early, sort of tapers off in the middle and then finishes strong as that time Shambay Wright Fair, the senior from Seaside, California, tried the left side. So their first series, two of their three plays were running. This series so far, one of the two plays. John, what are they going to try to accomplish here early in the game? Well, when you run a counter play like that, a lot of times you want to get the linebackers to step up. UCLA did a good job of shutting down that play. They may try and run the counter action here and uh, play action off of it. But because it's third and seven, there's absolutely no running back, so you're not going to have a counter play. Five receivers set out. And a penalty marker goes down. The pass caught right there by Philip Bobo. Close to the first down. Michael Williams, 14 on the coverage. But a penalty marker down on the play at the line of scrimmage. Looks like illegal procedure. It's a slant into Philip Bobo. And this is what I said about Bledsoe. Look how tall he is. He has a nice high release. He throws the short touch pass a lot better than he has in years past. And this is a situation where the first down is called back because of illegal procedure. Procedure called by referee Pat Flood. So the uh, ball will be moved back. That'll present a third and long situation for Washington State. And I'm talking to Ted Williams, their offensive coordinator, who used to coach at UCLA. He told us last year they were presented with far too many of those situations. And this year, they would taken themselves out of that. And that's why Bledsoe, who was sacked 56 times last year and nine times in the game Six against UCLA. Repeat third down. So they say six men on the line. And they need seven. Yeah. But anyway, because uh, he was sacked so many times, uh, third down situations, not obvious passing situations, so he has not been on his back as many times this year. He's got a third and 12 here from the seven-yard line. He'll just hand it up the middle. And room to the outside. Shambay right there is pulled out. Past the 30 to the 33 by Carl Greenwood. 25 yards on the pickup by this guy who could well be leading the Pac-10 and rushing before the day's over. That's right, California's Russell White isn't in. Sean Bay right there, you know, when you have the number one throwing quarterback, you think that you have to throw in third and long. Handoff up the middle, good blocking. UCLA was caught thinking pass, and Sean Bay right there was able to break it for a first down. Averaging over five yards a carry, seven touchdowns on the year. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. Here's Play action. Bledsoe scrambling to the right and throws it out in the direction of Shambe Wright Fair. The pressure by Sally Asia, number 55, coming from the weak side. And I know he's upset there because Bledsoe, this is the kind of pass he's been working on in the offseason with coach Mike Price, who happens to coach him as a quarterback. There's a look at Sally Asaya, the nose guard. But Bledsoe 
has been working on the touch pass, throwing on the run. I said he has good footwork, and he does for a big man. And that pass, I think he'd like to have back. So Asaya right now, the uh, sophomore from Oceanside, California, with one sack on the year, applying a lot of good pressure. Bledsoe has not completed a pass. He's 0 for 3 so far. On second and 10, he's going to have to run with it. As Bledsoe, that's a late hit right there. That's a late hit at the 46-yard line, and it was not called. 14 yards on the pickup. The tackle by Nkosi Littleton, but it was Marvin Goodwin, the man that hit him late. Uh, now, Drew Bledsoe said this is one thing he doesn't like to do, Roger, and that's run with the football. He likes to buy time in the pocket, but you're right. Doesn't get tail trailed down from behind. Nkosi Littleton, but Carrie Coquinn, I think, has a late hit there, number 47. Goodwin, 22, was the guy that uh, also got there late. So, so it was Goodwin who was late. Yeah, wasn't right. called, but uh, Washington State's got a first and 10 with 7.04 left to go first quarter at the 46-yard line. And so far, it's been the running game of Washington State. And they'll do it again up the middle. Right there, tries to get it to the outside. Right now, let's go to New York and John Saunders. John? Roger, what looked like a romp between Penn State and Boston College is a little closer. John Sackett O.J. McDuffie, he fights his way in. Seven yards, they are down just 11 after a two-point conversion. Roger. Thank you very much, John. As we're back here at Pullman, clock running, six and a half to go, first quarter, no score. Penn State may not have recovered from that uh, difficult loss last week against Miami. Oh, absolutely. Second and eight from the 48. Washington State has rushed for 52 yards, none passing so far, and they still don't have any. At that time, they brought a safety blitz in. 21 on the coverage there was Carl Greenwood, but they had a safety blitz with Marvin Goodwin coming in from the outside that really gave uh, Drew Bledsoe a little something to think about as he was releasing that football. But he saw the blitz, and he got rid of the ball in rhythm. You know, Drew Bledsoe's been off to a couple of bad starts this year against Fresno State. He was 13 for 31 going through the third quarter, and against Arizona, he was only 9 for 21 in the first half. So he has a way of getting off to a good start, but then when the game becomes meaningful, he seems to rally. Third down and eight out of the shotgun. Bledsoe down the middle, and it's dropped. So he's had two passes dropped. The intended receiver there was Darren Pointer, a junior from Tacoma. And Othello Henderson was on the coverage. Darren Pointer will be running a crossing pattern. Drew Bledsoe has crossing patterns. It's man-to-man -man defense. And he buys a little time in the pocket and puts the ball right on the mark. Darren Pointer just drops it. And Othello Henderson has been known to talk to the receivers a little bit after a play like that. On fourth down, Steve Johnson at the 32 to punt it to Tommy Bennett, a freshman from San Diego and the fair catch inside the 10 to the eight yard line. So UCLA hanging tough against the Cougars with 5.58 to go first quarter. And welcome back, Roger Twibell, John Spagnola here with you on homecoming Saturday in Pullman, Washington. The Cougars 5-0 ranked 22nd in the nation. The Bruins winners of their first three but losers of their last two and that young man John Barnes born in Lewiston Idaho about 30 miles from here spent his early years in Clarkston Washington about 27 miles from here moved to San Diego uh, went to junior college uh, down in the San Diego area Western Oregon College UC Santa Barbara fourth school in five years this is some kind of story if uh, things work out Sharman Shaw 27 a true freshman from Los Angeles is the tailback on first and 10 from the nine yard line as he tries the left side and he is stuck right there. 29 was the first man to come up and make the stop. Mark Fields, a six foot two, 223 pound sophomore from Cerritos, California. And they tell us he gets that glassy eyed look before a <laughs> game, John. Mike Zimmer, the defensive coordinator, said they wanted to get Mark Fields, number 29, in the game as quickly as possible. They're going to bring him from all over the field in blitzing situations. One thing about the Cougar defense, they don't make a lot of sacks, but they have a lot of tackles for losses. They average about seven a game. Anthony McClanahan also in on that stop. Second and 12. They'll draw to Darren Washington. He is met right at the 10-yard line for red shirts. And by the way, red pant. Washington State Cougars. Uh, they they are crimson. Well, they're crimson. Let's be exact. They are crimson. <laughs> a bit of a counter play Darren Washington on the on the uh, carry 
as UCLA pulls a backside guard and tackle on that play. Derek Stevens, number 76, and Vaughn Parker, number 68. But not a lot was happening. And, you know, this Cougar defense is not very big, but it plays an aggressive, swarming, slanting, stunning kind of defense. Very quick. I mean, they go sideline to sideline as well as anybody in the country. Third down and nine from the 11. 4.35 to go. First quarter, no score here. And Barnes with some play action, and he can roll out and throw it. Intercepted. Picked off by number 31, Ron Childs. Touchdown. what Terry Donahue feared the most. Rollout action by John Barnes. Nobody's open downfield. Instead of just taking the loss, he tries to squirm it in there. J.J. Stokes, I think the ball slipped off his hands. And Ron Childs, a converted running back, was there to make the play. And finally, he gets to run like a running back. It looks like he knows what to do with the football. A sophomore from Kennewick, Washington. The extra point by Aaron Price is no good. Aaron Price misses. The extra point wide to the left. We'll hear about that at home, won't he? Well, his dad says he loves him whether he makes him or misses him. <laughs> and he's made a lot for him this year, I'll tell you that. Had a game winner against the University of Arizona earlier this season. And he's looking at the official, talking to the official, saying, what's wrong? And dad's out there on the field screaming at the official right over by his son Aaron. Well, sometimes you kick the, field, the extra points so high over the uprights that the... There's a there's a, a judgment call by the official as to whether it was good or not. Maybe, and that, that was a very high kick. You know, I talked to Mike just before the game about that very thing, about why don't they make the goalpost higher. And he said they ought to, as high as these kids, the soccer-style kids, kick the ball. That's Nonetheless, true. it's not going to change. And I want to remind you, tomorrow night on ABC, begin your evening with Life Goes On. Then country music star Billy Ray Cyrus. Guests on America's Funniest Home Videos. Followed by America's Funniest People and Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan star in the Sunday night movie When Harry Met Sally. That's all tomorrow night on ABC. So Mike Price still getting on the officials about... That missed extra point. Terry Dunning's greatest fears were realized on that particular series. Exactly. You know, so far, it's been a field position game. And I think he felt if he could keep his team in the game, they could gain confidence in John Barnes as the game went on. But after a, a terrible turnover like that for a touchdown, he's faced with a situation where the Cougars could be stampeding themselves here. Price to kick it off. Darren Washington and Ricky Davis back deep. And this is a short kick. And Washington will take it at the 12. And he is tripped up at the 28-yard line. Coming down for Washington State, number 46 on the tackle, Eric Thompson, uh, backup linebacker. And so UCLA will take over now with 417. And this is the extra point attempt by Aaron Price. And you see how high it was, uh, high above the uh, upright. Well, it's yeah. impossible to judge from this angle, but... Uh, that was his first miss, John, this year after making his first 14. He's one of the leading scorers in the nation. So, we're going to see now number seven, the true freshman, Ryan Fiend from Simi Valley, California, 6'4", 197. This is their quarterback of the future. They were hoping to redshirt him. It won't happen now, and he'll hand it off to Sharman Shaw, another true freshman. And he is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. John, at some point in time, a coach has to make hard decisions. And Terry Donahue was faced with a hard decision when he found out that Rob Walker, who couldn't play, who took the place of the injured Wayne Cook, who took the place of the sophomore Tommy Maddox, who departed for the NFL. And it's, it's what do you do for now? What do you do for the future? I like the fact that he's putting Ryan Fien in now. I mean, they're down 7 nothing. It's not a blowout at this point. I think to put a true freshman in when, say, your team is down 20 points would put him in a jeopardizing position. First time this young man has ever set, first, uh, ever set foot on artificial turf. And the handoff, it's fumbled. Washington State recovers. Now he was down. He was Are they going to call him down? I believe so. They are going to call him down. McClanahan came in there on the missed exchange between Ryan Fien and Sharman Shaw. See, now this is a difficult situation to put a quarterback in, though. He's, he's a true freshman. Ryan Fien has got to catch the ball from the shotgun and then work a handout 
handoff off. And that's a difficult thing to ask him to do. I think he's a lot better handing off just by taking the snap from center. Aaron Gideon has a bad hand, too, the starting center, number 67. So yeah, there's all sorts of problems with the quarterback center exchange to begin with. He's had a broken bone in his right hand as Kevin Williams, number 20, checks into the game on third down and 16. They're going to run the option. Williams has got some room to the outside. Williams, midfield. Williams has got sprinter speed. Can anybody get him? Touchdown. I think he pulled his hamstring at the end, too. 78 yards on the touchdown run by the senior Kevin Williams. I think he pulled his hamstring at the end. But one thing we were... One thing we were told that Ryan Fien does have some option experience from high school, and I think the, US, or the uh, Washington State defense was caught completely off guard here. They didn't really prepare for any kind of option attack, and it was used perfectly by Ryan Fien. But look right there how he pulled up a little bit lame. I think he pulled his hamstring. Luis Perez to attempt the point after. 12 out of 12 so far this year. And it's good, and UCLA has got the lead. So all of a sudden, they go from a third down and 16 situation. And what happened that time? McClanahan, the middle linebacker, got caught inside on the block, and there was all sorts of room to the outside. And he did. The Cougar defense is a, is a stunning defense. Once you can take one defensive player out of the game with the pitch, Kevin Williams is off to the races, and there's man-to-man -man coverage downfield. Now the secondary players are starting to realize what's going on. But Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator, for UCLA said we don't expect Kevin Williams to run 100 yards tomorrow. He can't run a 100-yard dash. He had to here, and I think he hurt his hamstring on this play. Good job, baby. Harry met Sam. He'll kick it off, and back deep for Washington State. Coming up the near side, that was uh, number six, Calvin Schecksneider. And... Bone a penalty marker down on the play. Hey. Penalty marker down on the play. Sheck Snyder, a wide receiver, and the penalty is going to go against Washington State. So, uh, John, Washington State a, a little sluggish, a little lackadaisical on their first couple of series. Uh, their defense gets the touchdown for them. They've got UCLA in a really a tough spot. Illegal block in the back on the return. Ten yards from the end of the run. First down. And now all of a sudden momentum has turned around because the true freshman, Ryan Fien, comes in. And even though it was just an option play, now a team that all week didn't know who their quarterback was going to be, they now know who it's going to be, and they now know what they can do. I think you'll see Ryan Fien for the rest of the year. Now he has some confidence, and UCLA has the lead. And once again, Drew Bledsoe and the Cougars have pretty poor field position. So and Bledsoe is quickly here. Bledsoe is 0 for 5, has not completed a pass yet today. 2.34 to go first quarter. First and 10 from the 12 yard line. And they'll run it. Left side. John Bay, right fair across the 15. And right now let's go to John Saunders in New York, John. Roger, don't count Penn State out yet. There's about a minute and a half to go. Richie Anderson, two yards. Then they get the two-point conversion. They trail now by just three with a minute 39 to go. Roger. John, keep an eye on that one here in the next couple of minutes. Second down and six. Washington State is trying to set the pass up with the run. Bledsoe has not completed the pass. He's had two drops. Coming near side, and another one off the hands of his intended receiver, Philip Bobo. There's a penalty marker down. Othello Henderson on the coverage. And holding called against Washington State. And John, sometimes the worst fears of a, of a coach or even a team is to be ranked, to be undefeated, to be going on to one of your best seasons maybe in some time. Watch a tight end, first of all, number 98, Clarence Williams. Nobody covers him here. I mean, Drew Bledsoe didn't have time. He's trying to go to the open receiver and just overthrows Philip Bobo on that particular play. But you're right. I mean, Washington State Her is team not used is, to having yeah. success. They're 5-0. They want to be 6-0 for the first time since 1930. They come in against a wounded UCLA team. It's homecoming. The place is sold out. I mean, everything looks really good. 
But the thing is, they still have to play UCLA and beat them. Exactly. And even though a lot of the UCLA starters today, especially on defense and some on offense, are backup players, there are a lot of coaches in this country that will take the UCLA backups <laughs> any day of the week. The difference is they just don't have the experience right now that the starters have had as we are faced with a, a third down situation, third and six for Washington State. 152 to go. First quarter from Pullman. Fumble. The snap is fumbled. Bledsoe falls on it. But all sorts of bad things happening now for Washington State in what has been one of the most proficient offenses in the country. Third in passing. First in total offense. Tenth in scoring. Ronnie Tobek, 66. Looks like he just doesn't get the snap up from center. Through Bledsoe, and Bledsoe at least has enough presence to fall on the ball. Washington State is now one for four in third down conversion. Steve Johnson to punt it as he's a couple yards deep in the end zone. Tommy Bennett back deep. And that will get a good bounce for Washington State inside the 45 to the 43 yard line. Let it keep going. And it's still kind of rolling down there. Down to the 41. So good job that time by Johnston. But good field position for UCLA. 46 yards on the kick with a less than a minute to go. This was a very loose group here at Washington State this week. John, since we got here on Thursday, I think the players coaching staff, they felt the practices had gone well. They didn't feel like they really needed to try to get these guys too pumped up because Washington State has been faced with these situations before. What, too many years ago, they were 6-1, and one, lost their last four games of the year. Finished 6-5 and five that year. Back in 89, it's first and 10, 41-yard line. Keen will pitch it back. That's Shaw this time, stretching it to the outside. And that's what Washington State does so well defensively. As coming up to make the tackle was John Rushing, a sophomore from Merced, California, 27 tackles on the year. One thing here that works in Washington State's favor is that they played an option team last week in Oregon State. So all they have to do is go back to last week's game plan and understand who has fullback responsibility, who has quarterback responsibility, who has pitch responsibility. So in that sense, UCLA can surprise them, and they did, in fact, did. But now I think Washington State has made some option adjustments. Second down and 11. Bailey, the tight end, will split to the near side. Dean, straight drop back, throwing it. Good arm right there to midfield. And the catch, yeah, they say it is good. Mike Wynn. Number 81, a sophomore from Portland, Oregon, averaging over 12 yards reception, and Fien showed you a pretty good arm. He was highly recruited by Washington State University. Mike Price thought he had a chance at Ryan Fien, but when Tommy Maddox opted to go for the pros, Fien opted to go to UCLA. We've completed the first quarter from Pullman. And welcome back to Pullman as we get set to start the second quarter and it's freshman Ryan Fien at quarterback. First time he's ever been on artificial turf, but we saw him last night at the UCLA Hotel and it looked like he was chomping at the bit, getting ready, excited about playing this week as Carter gets the call right up the middle. Anthony McClanahan made the stop. And I think one of the things, uh, John, in talking to the UCLA people, Fien came to the coaching staff and says, look it, I want to play. I don't care about redshirting, if that's what you're thinking, if that's uh, coming into the process. I want to get out there and start playing. Well, he didn't think it would happen this happen. No. But he does, if he does well this afternoon, I think he'll be the starting quarterback for UCLA for the rest of the year. Well, Walker has played, uh, played pretty well in a couple of games. He's out with the ankle injury right now. First and 10, the 47. And Sean Shaw's got some room to the outside. Shaw can get it inside the 40 to the 37-yard line where John Rushing the sophomore from Merced, California. And Washington State usually does such a good job sideline to sidelines letting UCLA to First get outside. First of all, Washington number 48, Khalif Carter. He'll get a key block on Singer Mobley, the free safety number eight. And Charmin Shaw, just a true freshman, will get outside and get the first down. He's probably one of the fastest running backs on the UCLA team. Dorsey High, student president with a 3.4 grade point average. And his brother, Sharif Shaw, strong safety for the Utah U. Right? Second and one. Just underway, second quarter. They'll give it to Carter. He is stuck. He is stuck right up the middle there. 
Brian Ford, 69, a junior from Sacramento, California, met him head on, stood him up, and drove him back. And they might have. We'll see what they're going to spot it right here, but he could have lost a bit. Brian Ford's the biggest defensive lineman for Washington State at 295 pounds. The other guys are all, the other three defensive linemen are all 255 or under. That's the kind of play you want out of your big guy in the defensive line and forces UCLA into a third and one now. James Milliner was checked in at fullback as they'll pitch it to Shaw. He turns it. He's going to be close to the first down. He needed to get to the 38-yard line. And this will be very close. It's just shy of that. McClanahan might remember his dad, Brent, played with the Minnesota Vikings. The middle linebacker makes the stop. Great defensive surge. When anytime you can get penetration in a short yardage situation, and McClanahan runs sideline to sideline as well as any linebacker in the country today in college. He led the Pac-10 in tackles last year, and that's the kind of play he makes. He loves to run around the backside of blockers, shoot the gaps and make plays and he did that on that play ucla is going to play it safe on fourth and one darren shager standing at the 42 yard line tory hunter back deep and a whistle they took too much time i don't think that was intentional but a lot of times you want to let your punter get a few extra yards and kick the ball the way he normally does and I on the offense, repeat fourth down. It looked like Washington State still had their uh, defense on the field. They were thinking this maybe was going to be a fake. That's maybe called a gimmick a, play. A safe defense. Yeah. Keep your defensive guys there and just let them punt the football and don't care who fields it. You don't care about a punt return. Now they have their punt return unit on. Philip Bobo is deep. So Bobo standing at the 10 yard line as Shager tries to pooch one down in the corner and he does a great job of it. That's going to go out of bounds at the five-yard line. So Shager gets the job done there, 38 yards on the kick. Bruins lead it by one. And welcome back. Mike Price, head coach here at uh, Washington State. And John, uh, what do you think so far? Well, you can design <laughs> anything you want offensively. I, I know Mike Price has designed an interesting offense, but it has to be executed. There's been drop passes and bad center quarterback exchanges. And they will run it left side, getting the carry there, Derek Sparks, a sophomore from Santa Ana, California. And Bruce Walker, 6'4", 290-pounder uh, from Compton, the uh, nose tackle. He's had a bit of a struggle with his weight <laughs> to get down to uh, that. We're being very nice to him at 290, I might say, too. That's right. That, that is very accommodating. He's probably 290-plus they should put next to him. But I guess they could put him in at fullback anytime they wanted to with that number 49. That's right. Well, he, they say he's a pro prospect, and uh, he may follow in the footsteps of Refrigerator Perry if he has problems with his weight, but he's a good ball player. Second and seven from the eight-yard line. They'll pull the guard and the tackle, and Sparks had some room. He just couldn't find his blockers. Well, they pulled the right side of the line that time. Uh, he got a little bit of space there, up to the 14-yard line, but uh, Donnie Edwards, number 23, uh, the uh, redshirt freshman from San Diego, has had quite a year, 20 tackles, a sack, a couple of forced fumbles, a fumble recovery, was right there. And Washington uh, State is faced with a third down and two from the 13-yard line. They don't mind throwing on short yardage situations. Here they're going to run it. Sparks trying to get outside, and that's going to be real close. He needed to get across the 15 to about the 16. Edwards and Henderson were both over there. And that's going to be a first down for Washington State as we take a look at the first quarter statistics. UCLA on the strength of the rushing touchdown on the option play has 77 yards, and they have a 2-1 to -one edge over Washington State so far. And this is Washington State averaging 492 oh. yards a game, only getting 54 They're in ranked, the first quarter. They're ranked first or second in 11 offensive categories in the Pac-10, and they haven't done anything through the air so far. Just over 11 minutes to go, first half, first and 10 from the 16-yard line. Double tight end of line time Sparks moved in the backfield. Red ball, delay of game on the offense. Repeat first down. Well, that's carelessness. I don't mm -hmm. think Mike Price wants that. 
You know, one of the things that the Cougars show that they're doing so far is just trying to pound the football and get some breathing room for their offense to operate. But they're making the silly little mistakes, and that's going to well, cost you. Now it's first and 15. And, John, this is a veteran offensive team. They've got all starters back on offense, 19 altogether uh, on this Washington State football team. But they were the most penalized team in the Pac-10 last year. Sparks tries it outside, and he'll get across the 15 to about the 16-yard line where Carl Greenwood and Michael Williams come up from the defensive secondary to make the tackle. Add to that to the fact that uh, two offensive linemen, Bob Garman, 74, the right guard, and Jim Eicher, 72, are back in the lineup after being hurt, and they made some nice blocks, which allowed Sparks to get to the out outside on that play. That's a five-yard gain. Well, UCLA is missing Chalensky up front. They're missing Jameer Miller, Arnold Alley, linebackers. Shane Jasper also out with the injury. Their defense has really been best for it. Bledsoe with plenty of time. He's got a man wide open, C.J. Davis. At the 47-yard line, Carlton Gray was there to make the tackle. 31 yards on the first completion of the day for Drew Bledsoe. That's been a long time coming. Watch the maturity of Drew Bledsoe. He wants to go right side. He wants to go right side. He looks everybody off. He comes backside to C.J. Davis. He has the presence now to find the open receiver and also the touch to drop that ball down the chimney, as quarterback coaches like to say. C.J. Davis with a fine reception, and now Washington State is at midfield. Davis, four touchdown receptions this year, averages over 18 yards a catch as it's first and 10. 47-yard line, trips to the far side. Trying to set the screen up, and they've got Sparks. A missed block right at midfield. Well, I'd say Josh Dunning missed the block on number 23 for UCLA Donnie Edwards and Edwards was able to slow that play up even though they did gain about eight yards and that's the other dimension that a quarterback is 6'5 gives you I think Drew Bledsoe does an outstanding job setting up screen passes and he's tall enough to get it over the outstretched arms of the defensive lineman that was Matt Werner number 92 jumping up in the air but when you have a guy that tall who can just drop it over the lineman you're gonna set those screens up a lot better second and three So checking off at the line of scrimmage. Wanted to come near side. And he threw that ball away, even though it was in the midst of a lot of folks. And right now, we'd like to pause five seconds to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves. Mike Price. Third year, three and eight, four and seven, five and zero oh start this season. What I liked about that last play is Bledsoe realized he didn't have a good play. And quarterbacks have to understand that the defense calls better plays than the offense sometimes. But just get rid of the football. He didn't take a sack. He didn't throw an interception. And now it's third and three. Nowhere, nowhere that time is Kim Lawhorn, 83 was the man that busted through the junior from Trenton, Tennessee. And coming up, Pac-10 action continues here on ABC Sports as it's the Golden Bears, the University of California, and the 18th-ranked Trojans of USC. And that'll bring up a punting situation for Washington State from the 37-yard line, Steve Johnston. Tommy Bennett for the fair catch not a very good punt at the 18 yard line UCLA leads Washington State well the last time Washington State beat UCLA the Bruins are ranked number one here's the call from Keith Jackson Whoa, I'll say there he goes nobody back there touchdown And welcome back here to Pullman, the UCLA cheerleaders. Uh, got a few fans up in the stands to cheer to. But uh, this is homecoming Saturday here in Pullman. And Ryan Fien from Royal High School in Simi Valley, the Division II CIF Player of the Year in Southern California. 52 career touchdown passes and only three interceptions. And Sharman 
Shaw, the uh, true freshman running back, is tripped up at the 16-yard line by Anthony McClanahan. And Mark Fields, number 29, mm -hmm. came sprinting across to make that play, too. Fields has been a star on their special teams. Mild-mannered off the field. He gets that glazed donut <laughs> look before the games and becomes a terror on the field. The mild-mannered guys are the guys you have to watch out for. Because when they get on the field, they really release all their energy and emotion. Second down and 11. The true freshman, Ryan King. Fumble. Nobody sees it. Finally, Washington State's got it. And it's Ron Childs, the man that made the pick for the touchdown, that comes up with a fumble recovery. with two critical turnovers today for Washington State, both in UCLA territory. We said Aaron Getty in number 67 has a bad hand. Exchanges slips through Ryan Fiend's hands. Ron Childs is there to make a recovery. Well, those are the things that you worry about with a young quarterback that just hasn't had the reps in practice. He hasn't worked with that particular center until late in the week. UCLA went full pads on Thursday night, but it's been the defense for Washington State that's come up with a couple of big plays, and now the offense will try to do it. First and goal from the five-yard line. Bledsoe, the quarterback, sneak to the three. Boy, that's an interesting call, yeah. isn't it? I mean, you spread out everybody, but it wasn't as if there wasn't a running back. There was still a single back there. So UCLA was going to honor that by having at least the presence of one linebacker in the middle. Carrick O'Quinn, 47, a junior from Westlake Village, California, was the man that made the stop. So it'll be second and goal from the three-yard line. Bledsoe came into this game with 28 carries for minus nine yards. So that's not his strong suit. Well, hand it to Sparks. Nowhere to go on the left side. Oh, I am really surprised, John, that we're not seeing Bledsoe roll out with it, throw it a little bit more. Washington State's been very conservative so far. I think you will see it here, an obvious passing situation. No, but one but of the it's obvious to the defense. Yes, yeah. it is. One of the tough things I think Washington State has is they run so much single back offense, as Mike Price calls mm -hmm. for a timeout to discuss this, they, that they're uncomfortable in the situation you have a lead back block. So when they get in short yardage or goal line situations, they don't have that as part of their vanilla offense, their bread and butter offense. And that's what happens there. Time out on the field, 6.34 to go. Washington State's knocking on the door. Well, John Spagnola back with you here at Martin Stadium in Pullman. The Cougars, after the fumble recovery, have a third and goal from the three-yard line. They've got three tight ends in right now. With Shambe Fairright and Derek Sparks. And the play fade. Touchdown! Brett Carolyn from Drew Bledsoe. Wide open. Reception by Carolyn. Off the play action, you know, you expect the Washington State to go with a spread offense here. Brett Carolyn sneaks across off the play action. He's the best hands on the team, according to Mike Price, the head coach. And, you know, he caught that thing so quickly and threw it up in the air. It almost, it almost could have looked like a bobbled catch. It was hot, man. He had to get rid of it. <laughs> Some folks might remember his father, Brett Carolyn's dad, the late Reg Carolyn, a tight end for uh, the Oakland Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs back in the 1960s. And it looks like Washington State wants to go for the two. Not a bad idea. Get up to 14 points. We'll see if they go with the spread offense on this two-point conversion. Now, I think they probably will. They went with the, the power offense, if you will, to set up that play action. That's a great call by Mike Price. Well worth the timeout. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And especially after you have that timeout, you like to come back with a play that works. So many times you see a timeout call, team will come out, just doesn't go. That one had everybody fooled. And there's a discussion on the field. I see the referees talking. I think there have been some things thrown down on the field. Roses, perhaps? 
No, I think something with a little more substance than, <laughs> than that. It's a little early to throw the soft pedals oh, of the road. That, that looks like glass. Oh, that it does. Man, that's bad. That is awful. That's uncalled for. That is awful. They're not supposed to allow glass in, but some I'll tell you, I was stupid a, fan brought I, some in. I was at the Vikings-Cowboys game, the, the, uh, the Hail Mary touchdown pass when Armin Terzing, the official, was hit with a bottle in the head from a Viking fan and had to be taken from that game back in the, uh, the mid-70s. So that's a very dangerous situation. Glass on that artificial turf. So this game's going to be held up until all of that glass can be picked up. And well, these are the uh, the polls. Uh, AP is what we use at ABC Sports, and that has Washington State ranked 22nd. Uh, the other poll at number 21. Mike Price basically said, hey, look, at the polls, it doesn't really matter. The only thing it does, it, it keeps our name visible. He says, we go out and we try to recruit all over the country. We're looking for that next great quarterback, and uh, that just gives us an opportunity for more visibility. One thing head coaches hate to do is look ahead at the schedule, and we were trying to goad Mike Price into doing that a little bit, but there's a feeling here in Pullman that if uh, the Cougars can get this win today and go to 6-0 and with their schedule, should get them about eight or nine wins this year. And with this man, Drew Bledsoe, as a marquee guy, he doesn't want to say the B word, but that's a strong possibility. Well, they've got Southern Cal next week, and they still have Stanford and then Washington at home here later in the year. So they will go for two trips to the far side. They need a 12-7. Sparks is the lone setback. And they got it. C.J. Davis makes the reception, and what a terrific throw that was across the field by Drew Bledsoe. Well, he has the kind of arm to throw it out that far. That's what he did on that play. C.J. Davis is the inside receiver, number one, and you see a bit of a pick action there, and he's able to release outside. And that's just a beautifully thrown ball by Drew Bledsoe. That's the kind of touch that he has developed, and I can't emphasize that much on those kinds of throws. You just have to have that kind of touch to be a big league quarterback. First two-point conversion for the Cougars this year, and that puts them ahead 14 to seven. And we'll look at uh, Drew, his uh, father played at the University of Washington. His grandfather was a Washington State guy and then a Secretary of Agriculture here in the state of Washington. And uh, so granddaddy has a little more clout at home, I guess. Yeah. Well, some other important people that went to Washington Yeah, a couple State. of other ones. There's uh, Edward R. Murrow, one of the uh, finest broadcast journalists of radio and television of his age, a graduate here in the School of Communications, named after him. And there was another guy who we know who's calling that uh, Alabama-Tennessee game. Keith Jackson. And everyone here said the same hi to Keith. And when we see him, we will. There's a very short kick right there. Very short. Fumble, though, finally picked up. Washington took it, and he has stopped at the 20. So UCLA. Well, if you get a short kickoff like that, you just get people down quickly enough to make the tackle, and it really doesn't matter that much. And that ball was pooched up in the air, and Washington had a little trouble getting the handle. And so many times you see the kick returner look up. It's like a shortstop trying to make a play in baseball. Look up while the ball's down on the ground. You have to get the ball in your hand to get running first. UCLA rushes on the field. You know, they don't huddle on the first play of the series. They've done this just about all year. Carter. Washington, the setbacks, first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Dean wants the throw, he's got it, but the pass is dropped. The intended receiver was win, and Torrey Hunter put the big-time stick on him to break it up. That well, is a dangerous pass to throw, to ask a, a freshman to throw. I mean, that ball's on the far hash. It's only a five-yard pass, but the ball is going to at least cover 35, 40 yards in the air to get there. And when you ask a freshman to do that, Tory Hunter, who's an experienced cornerback, jumped on that thing and knocked the ball loose. Hey, but he did it. He got it there. Yes, he did. Wynn had it, and the stick by Hunter knocked it loose. Second and ten. Now, Dean changing his signals. He's got to hurry to get the playoff. They're not going to do it. He's not going to. Nope. Now they finally make the call. I mean, 
That clock had been on zero yes, for some was. time. That's the field judge's call. And Mike Price is leading the Washington State fans. <laughs> the field judge is supposed to watch the play of game on the offense for two second down. And he wasn't really alert on that play either. The clock had expired for at least two seconds before he made the call. This crowd is right on top of the field here at Martin Stadium. And when they start making some noise, it can be very, very distracting. Ryan Fee will get a real test now. Second and 15 from the 15-yard line. They'll hand it to Darren Washington. Breaks a couple of tackles. Gets to the 17, gain of about three, where McClanahan, 41, and rushing number 10, come up to make the stop. This defense was ninth or 10th, John, the last two or three years. Matter of fact, they were last in 91, allowing over 400 yards per game. But they've really improved themselves this year. That they have, they have speed from the linebacker position back to the quarterbacks in the secondary everybody can run well third down and 12. Dean is dumped he is hit by Ray Hall the junior from Seattle that's his third sack of the year a team that's only had six sacks coming into this game they don't get many sacks but Ray Hall just uses a swim technique to get through on number 76 Derek Stevens comes right through and makes the sack and now it seems like the Cougar team is into this ball game. They needed that turnover. They needed a two-point conversion, a good kickoff. Now everybody is into it. Shager, a couple yards deep in his end zone to punt it. Bobo back to receive the punt at the 43. Well, he's really got nowhere to go. You don't want to go backwards, oh. and he drops the ball. It's picked up. Number 14 for UCLA, Michael Williams takes it in for the touchdown. Wow. What a horrible mistake by Philip Bobo. Washington State went for the block on that punt. Philip Bobo knew he had no wall. He had no wedge. He had no place to go. He was trying to dance around and make something happen, and the ball slipped right out of it. Now, there's no blockers for him right here. So he should just get positive yards and get down on the ground, and the ball flips out of his hands. Williams is there for the recovery and what a way to change the momentum of this game man boy they had just really gotten the crowd into it and as you mentioned john there were five ucla players down there and he had nowhere to go he had nowhere to go that's great coverage by ucla and as as i said there were no blockers there so bobo makes a terrible mistake and puts ucla right back in the ball game 37 yards on the return for the touchdown as luis perez will go for the point after and he's got it UCLA has tied this thing up with 4.49 to go. First half from Pullman. Well, it's been all turnovers so far. I mean, we've seen one touchdown on the option play. Ron Childs gets an interception. He gets a fumble recovery. That sets up two touchdowns, actually scores one touchdown. And now you have the, uh, the fumbled punt here. Actually, it wasn't a fumbled punt. It was a fumble, so it wasn't a muff. And that would allow Williams to score on it. So he had three scores off the turnover. One legitimate touchdown and a tight score at 14. Well, the interesting thing about it is that Washington State University had seven turnovers in their opening game against Montana. But just five turnovers in their last four games. They had really cleaned that part of it up awfully well. And a couple of mistakes here by... Well, Bo State. Bobo has to feel horrible oh. about it, but the game is tied. He's the number one receiver in the Pac-10, he catches six balls a game, so he's going to get some opportunities to make amends. Darren but Pointer and Torrey Hunter back deep for Washington State University. That's the first touchdown by UCLA from a forced turnover in three games. That's Darren Pointer inside the 10. He's got a wall to the right. Good tackle right there. Penalty marker down. 47 for US UCLA. Carrick O'Quinn. Boy, he could have gotten about 20, 25 more yards, but a penalty marker goes down.
the thing is, you've got UCLA injured. You've got them playing quarterbacks that have never played before. You don't want them to be close. You want to put the hammer to them and try to get them away early. In Washington Illegal State. Block in the back on the return. 10 yards penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, I mentioned to you they were the most penalized team in the uh, Pac-10 last year. And they're one of the most penalized teams once again this year. And that penalty against Washington State. Drew Bledsoe had an awful day last year against UCLA. Not all of his fault. He got sacked nine times. UCLA, John, in that game, set all sorts of records. Well, as he said to us yesterday, and that was sacks last year, as many as they gave up, 56, he even said half of them were his responsibility as a quarterback not making the proper decision. So he knows he has to get rid of the ball. What so? Three of 10 and 42 yards. They're going to try to run it, and there's really no room to go anywhere. This is a good UCLA defense. Coming up at halftime, John Saunders with scores and highlights and uh, a profile of this uh, young man, Drew Bledsoe, who is now in the Heisman Trophy race along with Marshall Falk. UCLA allowing 14.6 points and 279 yards a game. Second down and nine as they've been running on first down. They'll throw on second down. Bledsoe is nailed. Coming in untouched is Marvin Goodwin. And Bledsoe never saw him. No, he didn't. That's a safety blitz. It came late. You should see it from your right side. Number 22, Marvin Goodwin, will come in here. Bledsoe's looking right side the whole way. He, and you're right, Roger. He never, ever sees him. Had his back to that side. That's a good call by Bob Field, the yeah. defensive coordinator. That's the second sack for Marvin Goodwin, a sophomore from Camden, New Jersey. And here, Washington State faced with a third down and 17 with 3.32 to go, first half. Trips to the far side. Now, Davis will come in motion. UCLA was showing blitz again. They try to draw it. Shambe right fair slips as he gets it across the 15 to the 16 with Donovan Gallatin, a junior college transfer from El Camino, makes the stop. Bob Field can make calls like safety blitzes, which he did there on second down, which set up the third and long because he's tied at 14 all. So with the game tied like this, you're going to see a little bit more cat and mouse, and UCLA can be more aggressive on defense. Steve Johnson back at his two-yard line to punt it. Tommy Bennett back deep. Nice high kick. Fair catch called. And Bennett has it at the 48, so with 2.42 to go first half, UCLA has got good field position. 32 yards on the punt. And it was just a moment ago that Washington State had the 14 to 7 lead. They were going to get the ball with good field position. The fumble by Bobo, the touchdown on the return of that fumble. And now UCLA with a chance to get some points on the board and get the lead. Well, the defense has to come up big here, either by stopping UCLA or getting a turnover once again. They're going to pitch it back to Darren Washington. And he is being chased and brought down from behind by Lewis Bush, who at 6'3 and 254, John, he showed you some great speed. He that certainly time. did. I mean, it wasn't that he was just running down. He had to pivot and turn and then run down the running back on that play. Still a gain of about four yards. Lewis on Bush that play. is one of two players who actually played in mm -hmm. 1988 when Washington State upset the then number one ranked UCLA Bruins. CJ right. Davis was the other. Ten players in all were on that team in 88 that went down to L.A. and were involved in that victory. Second down and six. Fiend will pitch it back to Washington. And he'll be close to the first down inside the 40 to the 39-yard line where Ron Childs, 31, the sophomore from Kennewick, 39 tackles coming into this game. And Singor Mobley, the safety, number eight from Tacoma, we talked about the UCLA injuries. Wayne Cook, the knee injury. Adams, the ankle. Arnold Alley, the broken leg. Jasper, the knee. La Chapelle, broken ribs. Chalinski out with the thumb. And then Jameer Miller and Rob Walker. <laughs> the team's going to major in sports medicine before this season's over. Barry Donahue says he's never seen anything like it all of his years of coaching. Third down and two. 
Dean wants to throw it. He's hit, and it's hit in the back. UCLA had a receiver over to the near side, Rick Daly. He got turned around, and the ball actually hit him in the back. He thought at that point that Bean was going to run the football, and the Washington State defense did an outstanding job there covering that play. Singer Mobley was on coverage on the tight end, and Greg Burns was on coverage on the deep receiver on that play. So that forces UCLA into a fourth and long one, maybe two. They bring in Brian Richards, another tight end. Fourth down and two. A, long, a fumble. The ball's loose. UCLA recovers. UCLA recovers, and it's enough for the first down. I think Ron Nielsen got that, number 72. There he is down at the bottom of the pile. Ball slips right through again. The second time this happened, Fiend just doesn't pull away, and the ball gets kicked forward. Nielsen is throwing a cutoff block. We don't see it. The ball's on the right side there, and the ball just slips right into his hands. Nielsen. Maybe we get a different view of it, maybe from the end zone, but I think Nielsen just threw his block. He's on the ground, and suddenly the ball just rolled into his hands. He's allowed to recover to advance the line. Well, it's the fourth down roll. Oh, it is. Not allowed to advance a fumble. But UCLA still has the ball. No, it's a first down. Okay, first down. UCLA called the timeout with 111. They have got two timeouts remaining. There's Terry Donahue. I don't know if I've ever seen a head coach uh, <laughs> quite befuddled as I saw Terry Donahue last night just trying to make the decision about the quarterbacks for the day, whether it would be Barnes or whether it would be Fiend. I think the thing that concerned him, he told us, John, that uh, it was Wednesday when they really realized that Walker wasn't going to be able to play. That's right. And they went out in pads on Thursday. And he stayed up and watched film, and he just, and talking to him last night, was just so uncertain. He said, I've never gone into a football game as a coach thinking that we didn't have a chance. He says, i got to tell you, I don't think we have a chance. <laughs> it's 25 years at UCLA, and there's the coaching staff for UCLA. They have never really seen anything like this, and understandably so. But the Thursday practice, I think, brought the team together. It was a hard practice. It's not the kind of practice you normally have on a Thursday, but at least I think there was some semblance of confidence that at least they could start to execute offensively. Take that a little further. He said if it was a Monday and we had to go with Ryan or John, he says then we could get them prepared and ready to go. He says he was addressing that from the fact that they really just had a day and a half for snaps and to get some reps and to get ready. First and 10, 37-yard line. Washington and Williams, the setbacks. Williams in the slot to the near side. Going downfield, the intended receiver there, number 82 for UCLA, Avery Anderson, a freshman from Riverside, California. Well, that was good coverage by number 27, Greg Burns. And of the cornerbacks to pick on on this team, he's the one you go after, but he had great coverage there. And what a terrible name for a cornerback. <laughs> Between Toast and Burns, I don't know which one would be worse. Well, those are all sophomores in the secondary for Washington State. The coach calls them the young and the restless. Second and 10, 105 to go. Team got his receiver. Got his receiver, Kevin Jordan, a redshirt freshman from Beltsville, Maryland. 16 yards on the pickup, and he can hum it in there pretty good. Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator, calls Kevin Jordan the possession receiver on the team, and this is kind of the kind of pass you want a possession receiver to, to catch. A hook route, he runs it well, he comes back to the football and creates room and secures the ball and gets the first down. His brother plays on this team. The Jordan brothers from Beltsville, Maryland. Stokes will go to the far side on first and 10 from the 21. 43 seconds left to go in first half. Pitch it back. Washington. Pitch it out of bounds. Loss of two is Torrey Hunter, the sophomore from Tacoma, Washington. Comes up to make the tackle. Oregon State wasn't able to run the option last week, and I think it's hard to run an option against a team with so much defensive speed. 
Washington has no place to go. Torrey Hunter forces it, and, and really you saw every, every option on the option, if you will, was covered there by the defense of Washington State. And when players can run sideline to sideline like these linebackers can, and all of them are four, six, or under, you're not going to have many opportunities in the option game. Second down and 11. They'll send Wynn and Stokes out to the far side from the I formation. Play action. Stokes, the intended receiver. On the coverage back there was Greg Burns, a sophomore from Los Angeles. Good job that time on the coverage by Burns. You know, what's interesting is uh, Ryan Fien went back to pass. Uh, I have to think about what Mike Price told us. Uh, Fien spent two days at his uh, house up here when he was being recruited. And his pitch was, look, at if you go to UCLA, you're never going to get the start for the next few years because of Tommy Maddox. And Price yesterday said, wouldn't it be ironic? <laughs> his first start came against Washington State. Well, he didn't start. No, he didn't. He is now the quarterback. But Fien also gave an oral commitment to Texas. Right. And then when Maddox left, he went to UCLA. Third and 11. Inside to Washington, and he is grabbed from behind as they get it to the middle of the field. Mark Fields, a transfer from L.A. Southwestern Junior College, makes the tackle as they're just going to set that field goal team up. They're going to call a timeout with 14 seconds. And, you know, that play almost could have popped. Yeah. There was a blitz by Washington State there, and that play came dangerously close to popping. The ball's right in the middle of the field. It's set up with 14 seconds before the half. And it's fourth down in an obvious field goal situation. Well, this is a young UCLA team made younger by all these injuries. The fewest upper-class starters in the entire Pac-10. As Luis Perez will be the uh, the man. Luis Perez is five for nine on the year, and as long as his 43-yard line, he's going to be kicking what about a 35-yarder, and he's one for one in the 30-yard range. Well, if they set this one up as the ball is at the 17-yard line. Be about a 34-yard attempt. And in his career, he's 7 of 8 in that 30 to 39-yard range. This has been an interesting first half of football. Uh, Drew Bledsoe has not really shaken loose yet. As you take a look at Arizona, boy, that's a tough team. They lead Stanford. The other games later on. But those are two very good defensive yeah. teams right there. Well, Washington State did to Arizona what UCLA and Miami couldn't do. And that was put some yards, score 23 points. Yeah, score some points and get some yardage against them. 35 yard attempt. Perez is four for four and field goals under 40 yards this year. And that is good. And UCLA has taken the lead against Washington State with nine seconds to go first half. The Bruins lead it 17-14. And that was not the Queen Mary coming through here, was it? Oh, it's just a little ways to the west before we get to the Pacific. <laughs> we are in the Palouse out here, and uh, what's turned out to be a pretty darn nice day. A few clouds to the east, but nice and clear out to the west. And I'll tell you, UCLA's got to be feeling awfully good. Oh, I think so. I'll tell you, they feel so much better right now than they did last night. I think Ryan Fien has done a pretty good job with the exception of the exchange problem mm -hmm. four with the center, and that's something that uh, you just can't work on at halftime. Other than that, he's made some good reads, and he's done a real nice job. Courtney Keeler will kick it off for UCLA. It's a low line drive type of kick. And it's taken there by Darren Pointer. Across the 30. Some late flags on that yeah. play. Well, Bledsoe, folks, can throw it. What, about 70 yards, 75 yards? Uh, 50 seven? yards off his back foot. Yeah. I heard about 70, 75 yards. And so I, I would just imagine if they've got time for one play, he will air it out. Five-yard face mask on the kicking team during the return. First and ten. Bledsoe just 3 of 10 
42 yards in that touchdown. UCLA will be back in the prevent. Two seconds left. They don't want to give up a big play. Trips to the near side. I guess they're going to go for the Hail Mary or the alley-oop, whatever you want to call it, down at the bottom of the screen. And it's picked off. Intercepted back there by number nine for UCLA. That is Othello Henderson. And he fumbles the ball. So Othello Henderson with his first interception of the year. And that ends the first half. We'll return with halftime activities after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Stadium. It's homecoming at Washington State. And UCLA, who came into this game with uh, a real quarterback problem, well, they might still have one, but at least they have the lead 17 to 14. And young Ryan Fien has uh, shown pretty well, except for a couple of quarterback snaps. Meanwhile, Washington State's a highly touted offense, uh, number one in total offense in the nation, has been sputtering so far against this good UCLA defense as we are set to go. Courtney Keeler to kick it off. And back deep, Darren Pointer and Torrey Hunter. And that's Pointer. He's got a seam as he gets to the 30. He's got the kicker to beat. He will go all the way. Seven yards. No flags on the play, and that's just what Mike Price wanted. As a head coach for Washington State, he needed to get the crowd back into the game. He needed to score. I'm sure he wanted good field position, but this is more than he could have asked for. There's a bit of a wall set up here. Boyd is able to take the ball upfield and then cut outside. And what you can't see is a devastating block right there on the left side on number 24 the point after by price is good 97 yards on the kickoff return for the junior from curtis high in tacoma washington one of five players from curtis high i can't see who got the block on number 24 robert gamble but there is a crushing block here on the left side of your screen coming up there there's one of them right there and there was another one and after that, it was all over. Darren Pointer takes off and scores. Good all he has to do is beat the kicker. And he sets his block up well there, which a lot of times doesn't happen with kickoff returns. Well, that's a good feeling, being able to go that last 40 yards, knowing that you got a 240-pound kicker that's in your way. <laughs> and you just got to make one little simple move. Folks, we have seen a little bit of everything so far today. We have saw a, a pass intercepted by Childs for a touchdown. Williams had a 78-yard run for a touchdown on an option. Then we saw a great play-action face fake, and Bledsoe threw to Carolyn for a touchdown. Then we saw Williams pick up the fumble and go in for the touchdown. And now we've seen the kickoff return for a touchdown. A lot of big plays, and a lot of them in an unorthodox style. Interceptions for touchdowns, fumble recoveries for touchdowns. We've seen a little bit of everything this afternoon. Well, that was Pointer's first career kickoff return for a touchdown. As Aaron Price will hit a knuckleball down the field. And Ricky Davis is stuck inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Whitmire was one of the guys down there to hit him, number 33 for Washington State. Now we'll see if the Washington State uh, crowd gets back in this game. They were stirring it up pretty well there at the uh, beginning of the second quarter, and then all of a sudden, Bobo fumbled the punt return, and that turned things around. But I imagine they're going to get back into it right here and put some pressure on Ryan Feeney starting the second half. UCLA first and 10 from the 15-yard line. Three backs in there with Feeney, and he'll take it to Washington on the pitch. And he gets maybe a yard. Kurt. Lurcher, 19, a senior, 6'6 and 235 from Montesino, Washington, and Singer Mobley, number eight, also Lurcher. went on the tackle. Lurcher looks like one of the, in the mold of a Ted Hendricks, a real long, lanky guy, a hard guy to block. He's got long arms. He strung that power eye sweep out and did a nice job. And Sugar Mobley, number eight, helped finish him off. 
Second and nine. Washington again. Maybe two yards that time. Anthony McClanahan, the junior from Bakersfield, California, who is an avid outdoorsman. And one of the reasons he came to Washington State, John, was he was at that 88 game in Los Angeles, the upset, and that changed his mind. That's exactly right. He was there. He saw, he said, I think I'm going to go visit this place. And as you said, he loves to hunt. And defensively, he takes a lot of chances. When he sees something, he goes. And I think he's one of the he's one of these linebackers you just can't reel in. You have to let him play his game. Third down and seven. Daly, the tight end, will split out to the near side. Fiend with some pressure, eludes it. And he gets the first down across the 25 to the 26-yard line. McClanahan and Rushing were there to bring him down, but the freshman from Simi Valley was able to find the stakes and get the first down. Dwayne Patterson was putting some pressure on from behind, flushed him out of the pocket, and he showed some pretty heady play there. Well, that's his first join in the uncharted waters as a collegian, and he did show a lot of presence. The pocket was collapsing, and the coverage was good downfield, and he converted the first down. And Ryan Fiend is gaining confidence as this game goes on. First and 10, 25-yard line, just underway. Penalty marker is down. Penalty marker goes down. The sun has uh, come out brightly now here in Martin Field in Pullman. I think the right tackle, Vaughn Parker. Dead seven. ball, ball start on the offense. Repeat first down. Number 68, Vaughn Parker, was going to pull on that play. He's the right tackle, and he just got back on his haunches a little bit early. Parker's from Buffalo, New York. His hero, Reggie McKenzie, who, uh, of course, played for so many years with Buffalo and then for Seattle. And uh, locked for the juice. Yeah. He's graded out uh, at 100% for their five games as far as uh, pass block. First and 15. Out of the eye. Fiend. Looking for his tight end, and it goes over the top of his tight end, and it's caught over on the far side by Mike Wynn. So that's offense by accident right there. Well, sometimes it pays to be lucky rather than good. In that case, I think you're exactly right. Fiend was throwing to his tight end, and it was one of those short, long type patterns on this far sideline. Overthrew his tight end, but Wynn came back to the football. And that's now we have a second and eight situation. N G U Y E N, but pronounced win. He was born in South Vietnam, escaped with his family from Portland, Oregon. Second down and eight from the 28. Being under pressure, not that time. Lurcher 19, one of the men there. Ray Hall 92, and also Ron Childs, and they were coming hard that time. John Addy. They brought the blitz that time. Those are all our dogs. You can call it if linebackers come. Some coaches prefer to call them dogs. But in that situation, all three linebackers are coming. Watch them. Number 41, McCannahick, McClallahan is coming. He's picked up. Nobody picks up Lurcher, who works his way through number 19. He gets to the quarterback first, and it's a sack, and then it's just gang tackling by everybody. Tell you, Childs went right through the blocker, Darren Washington, and knocked him into feed. Third down and 15. UCLA's 4 of 10. In third down situation, so pitch it back to Washington. And now it's a foot race to the sideline where he is driven out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Hey, so Wayne Patterson almost picked that pitch off. He was on the left right. side there, and he read, he went to the tailback. He almost got a hand on that thing. On the left side, number 86, the Wayne Patterson. Watch him. He goes upfield to the tailback, and he, he almost gets a hand on it. There, Washington's able to get some good yardage, but still UCLA must punt. And that's what Washington State does so well. They cover sideline to sideline. Uh, Shaker standing at the 15, and Philip Bobo will see if he can redeem himself. That's a beautiful punt, and Bobo goes back to the 20. Bobo with a seam. Now it closes quickly. If he could have got it a little bit more to the outside, the wall was beginning to set as he gets it to the 34 where Tommy Bennett brought him down. Welcome back to Pullman. It's homecoming. The folks here in uh, Martin Stadium feeling a little bit better right now as the Cougars have got a 21-17 lead. And they've got, actually, John, pretty good field position for the first time. They haven't enjoyed that too much today. At the 33-yard line, first and 10 for Drew Bledsoe. 
he'll pick it back. Sunday right there as he gets across the 35 to the 36. Gain of about four, Marvin Goodwin. A sophomore from Camden, New Jersey, comes up to make the tackle, and Rod Smalley, backup linebacker, also there. Plus 22 on the right side of your screen. Rob Bermiskern tries to pick him up, 77 to tackle, and he's able to fight off the block and make the play. You know, when you, when you use a two tight end offense and one single back, there's not too many lead blockers, and the safeties are often in a mismatch situation, but their good one was swift enough to be able to fend off the blocker and make the play. Second and six. Bledsoe looks back to the near side. He's got C.J. Davis for the first down to the 47-yard line. And I know, John, in practice the other day, you were very impressed with the passing drills that, that Washington State runs, the way they come back to the to the football. That's right. Mike Levenzel is the wide receiver coach, and he does an outstanding job working with his receivers. Let's take a look at the halftime stats. Total yardage about the same, 137 to 102, and the two turnovers are there, and that's really... What has happened in this game, the score was 17-14 at that point. Each team went to turnovers, and the game was pretty close, but the Cougars get the kickoff return, and now lead 21-17. First and 10 from the 47-yard line, 10-49 to go, third quarter. Bledsoe on the run to Bobo, and he can't get it. Just off his outstretched hands, so Othello Henderson was on the coverage. Marvin Goodwin given chase from behind, and that's one of the things that uh, is so impressive about Drew Bledsoe, his ability to throw on the run, his ability to move out of the pocket. But well, we talked about this as an aspect, too, Roger, and that's at the beginning of the show today. We talked about how this is a very good UCLA secondary, and Bledsoe's not putting up good numbers because he's had to be in bad field position, but you have Othello Henderson and you have Carlton Gray, you have some really good secondary players, and they're covering. Well, that's one of the few times they've been able to throw on first down as Shande right there is able to get a couple. Man, good job by the UCLA defense that time. Rod Smalley came busting through, nearly had him behind the line of scrimmage. Fort Goodwin came up to make the tackle, and Washington State now faced with a third down situation and about seven. So this UCLA defense came into this game having played some pretty good football this year but injuries have really decimated them but they've hung awfully tough here today and they've been able to stop washington state on most of these third down situations but bledsoe's got all day he can't get it to his receiver though the intended man was calvin sheck snyder a senior from fresno california robert gamble was on the coverage over there but he had all day to throw that football. Well, if you have the time, but you don't have anybody open, you can't complete the pass. And that was great coverage by Carl Greenwood. Once again, we see the stats and the turnovers, the time of possession. Everything's about the same total yardage. And Washington State should average about 250 yards by the end of the first half. So they're way behind there. Steve Johnson's sixth punt. And Bennett is going to make the catch, a fair catch, at the 17-yard line. 9.53 to go third quarter. The Cougars lead the Bruins. And they also have the Bryan Tower clock. It chimes at the top of every hour, dismissing students from their classes. Well, for all you fans of ABC's General Hospital, that is Antonio Sabato, Jr., better known as Jagger Cakes, who's appearing here at Washington State, their homecoming weekend. He's getting a little involved in the wave yeah. as the wave is going around the stadium. I know Spagnola never misses <laughs> GH. First and 10 from the 17-yard line. They try to go up the middle, and this Washington State defense inside has been very tough to run against. The only success UCLA has had was that option early in the game to Williams, who looked like he re-injured his hamstring on that run, but they've been very, very tough to stop up the middle with guys like Bush and Hall, Ford, Patterson, the backers, Lurcher, McClanahan, and Childs. And coming up, the uh, Chevrolet player of the game. John and I will be selecting the most valuable player from each team for the 22nd year for the Chevrolet Scholarship Program. Each uh, school will receive $1,000 in the player's name. Second down and seven from the 20. Play action as he rolls to the far side and now decides to run. And he's dropped down at the 23-yard line by Ray Hall. The 6'4", 260-pound junior from Seattle, Washington. 
What I like about Ryan Peen is that he's not, he, I mean, when he's he's decisive. When, when he knows there's nothing downfield, he gets going and he gets running. And he did that in this situation. He was trying to go to Mike Wynn, but he was covered well by Torrey Hunter. As we have an injured player on the field. But he knew he didn't have it, and he took off and ran. And, that, and I like that out of the young freshman. That's Ray Hall, 92, the man who made the tackle, who was down on the turf. And this was a good play action move here. And I, you make a good point. I mean, he makes a quick decision there, John. Right. One of the guys he was trying to pass the ball to was number 85, who was being held up by number 86, Dwayne Patterson. 85, of course, the tight end, Rick Daly, for UCLA. And that's off that play action where you try and fake and block down as a tight end and leak off into the flat. So Ray, Ryan Fiend knew he had no receiver, took off, got some yards, and it looks like Ray Hall is up and he's okay. He's playing well today. He really is. This defense only had 19 sacks in, uh, in 91, and uh, Hall today with four tackles, uh, one of those for a loss, but I, I think when you look at sacks, and like you mentioned earlier, they make a lot of tackles for losses, so sometimes that can be deceiving. Third down and four from the 24-yard line. Bean looking near side. The intended receiver was win. Bean was dumped that time. Brian Ford, 69, the man putting pressure on him. And now we're starting to see John the field position shift just a little bit if uh, Washington State can handle the punts and take care of the football a little bit. That's right. Washington State has yet to prove it can drive the length of the field, though, and score a touchdown. Uh, one thing that uh, Mike Price, the head coach, was trying to do is just limit the number of plays called, use more formations. But they still have to drive the football down the field, and they've had some success before, so far. Shager to punt it from the 10-yard line. Bobo is back to field it. Stays on his feet to the 45-yard line. Good coverage that time by the UCLA special teams. McClave was down there. 38 yards on the punt and seven on the return. Paul Pemecki, you see there the man who snapped the ball is also down. And Mike Price signals in the plays from the sideline. Either Mike Will or the uh, backup quarterback for the Cougars, Mike Pattinson who was number 13 right next to him there. So, And he uses Ted Williams, who's upstairs, the offensive right. coordinator, to give him a look at what's going down on the field coverage-wise. First and 10, 45-yard line, 837, out of the shotgun. Bledsoe comes it down there to the 40-yard line. C.J. Davis makes the grab, and that is a first down. And once the field position changes, they're able to throw the ball on first Right, down. and the shotgun is a good changeup. I'm sure UCLA just played a zone defense here. Bledsoe gets some time to see the whole field, and as you said, he hums it in there. This man can throw a ball on a line if he wants to. Davis had a big game last week, five catches uh, for 121 yards, including a 58-yard touchdown reception. He also threw a 38-yard touchdown pass off the reverse, and so far today, he's got three catches for 58 yards on first and 10 from the 40. Bledsoe has got all day. Finally, he's got some room to the near side. And he'll step it out of bounds at the 30, very close to the first down. Good pass protection that time by Tobeck and Dunning. Timiskern, Iker, Garmin. Really a good job. Very good protection. He had an open receiver in the middle of the field. I believe it was C.J. Davis who was clapping his hands frantically. He couldn't find C.J. Davis and takes up. Not comfortable running, but he puts the ball in his left arm and becomes the runner and gets out of bounds. And that's uh, all you really want out of your quarterback in that situation. Offensive line did a tremendous job there in buying that time for their quarterback. I mentioned Josh Dunning doing a good job. His brother, Matt, is starting lineman at Dartmouth. I just wanted to get that in for you, you know, being a former Ivy Leaguer. Dartmouth is playing yellow today. I, I know it. That's <laughs> First and ten, they try to swing it around to Bobo. If he can get outside, he's got some room. Bobo to the 21-yard line. He ran about 40 yards to pick up nine. Othello Henderson made the tackle. A Sean Bay right fair came back and gave Bobo a pretty nice block to allow him to get around the corner. Well, Bobo isn't going to change his game, even though he had the fumble earlier today. This is the reverse. He comes around. Nothing's there. Comes back across the field, and you'll see Sean Bay right fair. Number 32 right there make a nice peel-back block. And Bobo gets his team into about a second and third situation. That was a third carry of the year for Philip Bobo, a junior from Moreno Valley, California. Second down and two at the 21. They'll give it to Sean Bay right there. And 
he checked it off tackle, and he should have enough for the first down. Sean Bay, a six foot, 219 pound senior from Seaside, California, and he had a terrific day. 27 carries for 112 yards against the Arizona Wildcats. Let's right take a look again here. Right side, number 72. That's Jim Eicher, who's getting his start for the first time in three weeks. Throws a nice block there. Eicher had back surgery. He had part of a disc sucked out of the lumbar area of his back and was able to come back in three weeks. It's amazing what they can do now in sports medicine. And Eicher throws a nice block. Right there. First and 10 at the 18-yard line. 6.55 to go third quarter. The Cougars lead it. 21-17, Bledsoe with plenty of time, and a penalty marker is down as the intended receiver, Darren Pointer, has it goes through his hands. And, you know, John, you've caught a lot of footballs uh, in your day. I mean, sometimes that thing gets there so fast, we've seen a couple now just slip off the hands of the receivers. And the holding call against Washington State. There's a time and a place to really burn it in there and then there's another time when you want to just kind of lay it in there well Bledsoe was throwing to his receivers the other day and I don't know if it's because we were on the sidelines or what illegal was going block on. in the back on the offense repeat first down but he was uh, as they say busting up the hands a little bit I mean he could throw the ball so hard that it's uncatchable now there's certain situations where you have to do that and then there's other situations where you shouldn't as a quarterback and I think Bledsoe is learning which situation is which well, he said as a kid he was a baseball pitcher, but he quit because he, he hit so many of his friends they didn't wouldn't play with him anymore. <laughs> well, he's got a mean streak anyway. Well. Now the ball. Back at the 29-yard line. First and 25. As Davis goes in motion to the far side. Draw play. I'll tell you, UCLA was waiting for that. Did not fool them at all. Donnie Edwards, a redshirt freshman from San Diego was right there to make the stop. Donnie Edwards plays as a nickel rusher. One thing UCLA wanted to do is give a lot of different fronts and looks and coverages. They were going to play a 3-3-5, a 4-1-6 on first and second downs, alternating the fronts and coverages, and uh, it makes a real nice play there, and they did redraw all the way. Cougars sent trips to the near side on second and 24. And they go over the middle. Bobo with the reception. Well covered, though, as he gets inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Michael Williams, a senior from Los Angeles, and Othello Henderson, the junior from Colleen, Texas. There's a look at Williams, number 14. Michael Williams in man coverage there. Scored the touchdown earlier today on Philip Bobo's fumbled punt. It's man-to-man -man coverage, and uh, he keeps up with Bobo and gets some help from Othello Henderson and Goodwin, number 22. But I am really impressed by the coverage of the secondary for UCLA all day. And I, this is a real stiff test for Drew Bledsoe. He's got to find the open receiver. And the receivers have to work hard. Third down and 18. Washington State, three of nine in third down situations from the outside. Bledsoe is in the grass. Now he throws it to right there and gets it about to the line of scrimmage where Marvin Goodwin makes a stop. And there's some pushing and shoving. And a penalty marker goes down. Matt Warner, 92, was the man putting pressure that time on quarterback Drew Bledsoe. A penalty marker went down as some of the players started to push and shove by the Washington State bench. And if that's against Washington State, yeah, that's going to take them out of field goal back up here. Back up off the field. What do you got here? What? Even if that would be about a 50-yarder, wouldn't it? There's a scuffle on the sidelines as John Bay Wright Fair gets turned to the sidelines. I think Goodwin's pretty excited about the play he made. It's a little pushing and shoving. And the flags go out. It looks... I don't know if you well, can really fault any team. Maybe both sides get a penalty, but it looks like Washington State is going to have the penalty marked off against them for probably unsportsmanlike conduct. And you're right, Roger. It does take uh, Washington State out of field goal range. So once again, the Cougars have had uh, pretty good field position, not been able to come away with anything. This UCLA defense has really done a terrific job today of putting the clamps on Drew Bledsoe in this high-powered Washington State offense as Johnson will come in to punt it from the 43-yard line. Tommy Bennett back deep. Well, that's a, really a nice high punt, but 
Bennett's going to make the fair catch at the 19-yard line. No chance for a return there at all. Five minutes to go, third quarter. Washington State leads UCLA 21-17, along with John Spagnola. I'm Roger Twybell here in Pullman, Washington. And pretty good comeback by the Jayhawks today. Trailed at 47-21. They came back to win it 50-47. And they've got Oklahoma at home next week. They should check out some of the other scores on the ABC Sports Board. Well, it's good to see you all with a smile on your face on your birthday, Roger. Right. Everything's working Thanks. out for you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, John. Yeah. First and 10, 18 yard line. Ryan Fien, still the quarterback for UCLA, gives it to Sean. He is stuck. Nowhere to go. Mark Fields was the guy. They told us to. They told us to put a camera on this guy and just follow him around because he makes something happen. He does. I don't think there was a play though. There's a penalty flag on the far side of the field thrown by the head linesman. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Keep first down. Probably some movement in the offensive line. And I think it was on the left side, number 71, Craig Novitsky. He seemed like he popped up a little Look early. Look at Fields. Watch Fields come through there. I mean, he's, he's just a terror. He's one of these guys like a guided missile. That was a penalty right there. That was the penalty? Okay. Well, that's pretty, pretty picky. Pretty picky. Pretty picky. A little flinch by a wide receiver usually does not get a call. First and 15. Less than five minutes to go. Third quarter. Darren Washington breaks about three tackles and gets it to the 15-yard line. Gain of about two. Mark Fields once again. Junior college transfer. Cerritos, California. Came into this game with just six tackles. Had been playing special teams, and John had been so impressive on the kickoff and punt coverage, they had to get him into the game more. And coming up next here, Pac-10 action continues on ABC Sports because it'll be Cal and USC. That's coming up right after this game here on ABC. Washington State looking to go 3-0 in the Pac-10 for the first time ever. The Bruins, second and 14. Fiend from behind, fumbles a football. Fumbles a football, Washington State has it. Lewis push on the recovery. And oh, did Dwayne Patterson come from the outside on that rush. Dwayne Patterson with a marvelous hit on the backside of Fiend. Charge the ball loose, a blindside tackle. Dwayne Patterson on the left side beats number 71, Craig Novitsky, out right out of his stance. And, the, and Bush is there for the recovery. This is what a quarterback hates to see. I mean, that's the worst nightmare for a quarterback. As Dwayne Patterson comes through on a bone jarring tackle and knocks the ball loose. And now Washington State will take advantage of yet another turnover by UCLA. Just his second sack on the year, first fumble recovery for Bush, and it's first and goal from the two-yard line. I mean, he beat Novitski right out of his stance. Absolutely. Novitski's one of their best offensive linemen. Now they've got a two-back set with Sean Bay right there and Derek Sparks. The quarterback sneak by Bledsoe, and he is stacked up. Now, Bledsoe is 6'5 and 235. And all you've got to do is get him a seam or a crease off the center but he's got to get a little bit lower, John, going in on this quarterback sneak. I think he got bloodied a little bit on here. Looks like he was going to score, and then there was a bone-drawing tackle there. That was that Nikosi was Littleton. Nikosi Littleton, who came through and really stuck him right in the head. They're going to mark this ball just about six inches shy of the goal line. These quarterbacks are taking a beating here on these successive plays. Second and goal. Now let's call it a foot. Okay. Okay. Again, he got it. Touchdown. He got those big size 13 hoofs pounded, and he just got the initial hit, rolled to the left, and got that ball over the goal line. That time Littleton didn't make the play in time. But you know why I think Washington State runs this is because they run so little two back offense. That when they're close, they can just quarterback sneak it in there, and that's what they did on that particular play. Just another quarterback sneak. Bledsoe following his best friend. 
the center, number 66, Robbie, Robbie Tobek. Tobek, to get into the end zone. Now Aaron Price to attempt the point after. Out of the hold of Boone Horton. Some movement by UCLA. There was movement up front and penalty markers go down. 27-17. Washington State. Legal snap on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Okay, it's going to be against the Cougars. Well, it's been the Washington State defense today that has paved the way for the offense. And one of the things Terry Donahue was concerned about playing Ryan Keane was that so many bad things could happen in a situation like this to a young quarterback as the ball will be spotted on the extra point attempt at the 15. So from 25 yards away, Aaron Price kicks it up and through. And the Cougars now lead at 28-17. But, you know, young players, especially quarterbacks, have fragile psychs. <laughs> and you just don't know, you know, if the kid is banged up too much in this game, what will happen. But I can tell you this, John. I did Ty Detmer's first game as a quarterback for BYU against Wyoming when they put him in. And he got banged up big time. But he was a tough kid. He came back. And you know what type of career he had. That may very well happen with Ryan Fien. We're looking for the penalty. I don't see any movement, really, on the extra point. But you raise a good point. I mean, Terry Dunahue today has had three turnovers by his quarterbacks deep in their own territory, two fumbles, and one is an interception for a touchdown by Ron Childs, and that was uh, what got uh, John Barnes out of the football game. And really, Ryan Fien has done his best job as he can. He couldn't do anything on that hit by Dwayne Patterson. Uh, it's really impossible to protect the football in that situation. I want to remind you, Monday Night Football coming up from Three Rivers Stadium. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers. That'll be at 6 Pacific time right here on ABC. Twenty-eight seventeen with 3.26 to go. Third quarter. As Aaron Price will kick it downfield to Ricky Davis at the seven-yard line. Davis brought down on a good tackle at the 24 on the special teams for Washington State Anthony Rice a backup defensive back brings him down and Ryan Fien will be going back out one more time to try to get something going for this UCLA offense let's see what Washington State tries to do defensively now they finally have an 11 point lead and I think Defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer will be able to run the kind of defenses he's wanted to all game. Play action. Bean is going to cut it back against the grain. Boy, that's a dangerous situation. Right there is what you don't want your young quarterback to do because he exposed himself running back against the grain. Don Sousa, number 94, junior college transfer from Long Beach, and McClanahan were there to get him, and that's the scary times. But here's one of the problems with UCLA today, too. With an inexperienced quarterback, they don't have too many offensive plays. This is the third time they've tried to run this boot action, and it hasn't worked. But they have to keep calling, calling the play because they didn't come into the game with that many plays. Bean did get three yards on that play. Second down and seven. They'll hand it off to Carter right up the middle, and he gets maybe a yard, possibly two. And... A lot of action taking place away from the ball right now. I mean, this UCLA team, very frustrated. They had a two-hour practice on Thursday in pads, which is basically unheard of. That they did, but they had to, and it was all to give a quarterback extra work. How about Arizona leading Stanford in the third quarter. They call their defense down there the Desert Swarm. <laughs> They're tough. Play a Pac-10 is wide open. I mean, it's no sure thing for the University of Washington. Third and five. Once again, they try that play action. There's nothing there. It was the exact same play that UCLA ran on first down. It's not there. It won't be there. It'll never be there. But the problem is that they don't have that many plays in their offensive arsenal right now. 92, Ray Hall was in there. That's the third sack 
on UCLA today. And with 1.32 to go, this is a fired up bunch of Cougars here in Pullman. Darren Shager back inside his 20 will kick it to Philip Hobart. Bobo across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Looked like he might have slipped there before he was hit. And 39 yards on that punt as Drew Bledsoe will now come out and try to get something shaken. Well, the UCLA defense has done their job today. They came into the game today ranked 14th in the country, giving up 279 yards a game. And you really can't fault the kind of job they've done. The offense has put them in a tough situation every time. Trips to the far side on first and 10 from the 36-yard line. And they'll run it. Chambé, right there, goes left as a penalty marker is down in the backfield. Penalty marker is down. And holding's going to be a good call. I'll tell you what, this offense for Washington State University we talked about it a little bit with Mike Price about being concerned. I mean, they're averaging about 90 yards a game in penalties. He says, well, they haven't really hurt us so far, but this kills you. You get a fairly good field position, holding call on first down. It's when you get the penalty. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat first down. I don't know if any coach will say they've had a penalty against themselves in an opportune time. They yeah. never come at a good time, but you are right. I mean, in order to execute, execution involves every phase of your game, and that includes penalties, holding, running the right play, making the right adjustments. And in order for Washington State to have the kind of season they want, they have to execute better in all phases. First and 20 from the 26-yard line. Seven penalties for 71 yards as Bledsoe and his receiver slips. C.J. Davis slip. Right now, let's go to New York and John Sonner. John? Roger, if not for the tie against Notre Dame, you can bet Michigan will be getting some first-place votes. They're rolling over everyone, including Indiana today. That's Derek Alexander. Watch the speed to get away from the would-be tackler. 70 yards. That made it 28-3, 31-3 in the third quarter. Roger. Hey, he returned a, a punt against Iowa for a touchdown. He had one uh, kickoff against Houston. That Derek Alexander is an outstanding player. Uh, by the way, Marvin Goodwin has left the field for UCLA. He's got an injury, so Donovan Gallatin is in there right now. On second and 20, Bledsoe 7 of, eight, of 18 with a touchdown and the interception. And up the middle, Shambay right there is stopped by Matt Warner, a junior from Yorba Linda. And Warner, number 92, is playing with a broken toe. And I saw him last night, uh, John, hobbling around on it. And he was very questionable before today's game. He... He hasn't practiced all week. Terry Donahue Terry. showing his... And Homer Smith on the right side there with the cap on, talking to the offense about uh, some of the blocking schemes, some of the things they're trying to do. Goodwin has come back in the game now, as Washington State has a third and 18. Let's go from behind, and he is dumped. He holds on to the football as he falls forward to the 28-yard line. It was Donnie Edwards who came in looping from the outside and got him from behind. We've completed the third quarter, and we'll return with more action between UCLA and Washington State after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Homecoming Saturday here. At Washington State, Cougars lead at 28-17 over the Bruins. And on fourth down, Steve Johnson will go back for his eighth punt of the day, standing at the 14-yard line. Tommy Bennett back deep for the Bruins. Low kick that Bennett will take at the 31. He slips, met head on, still on his feet. And at the 35, he is brought down. 56, T.J. Folkers. Well, he horse collared yeah. him there. He's T.J.'s from Briar, Washington, and he's probably wrestled a few steer or <laughs> broken a few horses in his day. Tommy Bennett shows some pretty good balance, but he pays the price right there. 
That's a bone jarring tackle itself, isn't it? On Ashford Turf, those kind of tackles hurt that much yeah, more, too. Absolutely. The turf really doesn't give that much. You saw him slip too. We're starting to see some players slip. They water this Omni Turf down before the games, and maybe now the sand isn't quite as packed as it was earlier in the game. Dean will pitch it out to Washington, wants to throw it. Win is wide open, and he can't get it to him. Good idea that time. Tory Hunter was the closest defensive man to Mike Wynn as we have started the final 15 minutes of this game with UCLA using true freshman Ryan Fien in his first action of the year. That play was there. That was a touchdown. Yep. I think two things happened. It was underthrown. And Vince Salvador, number 99, put too much pressure on Washington, and he could have just aired out the way he wanted him to. Kevin Williams has checked into the game with the deep back, and he'll get the football, and he is dragged down, and it's Anthony McClanahan who came into this game with 47 tackles. Two of the more active guys we've seen for the Cougar defense today are McClanahan, 41, and Ron Childs, 31. And they have a little friendly competition between them. They hate to see the other guy out-tackle them during the course of the game. <laughs> well, so they compare stats. Hey, that's great for the defensive players. Absolutely. Well, you just don't want them blowing their assignments in order to make a tackle, but both are very active. Third down and seven. Wynn and Jordan are split to the far side. Daly, the tight end, who they haven't gone to today, is split near. On the run, loose ball. Intended receiver was Mike Wynn, and there were no less than four crimson-clad defenders right there. There's a new left tackle on the left side, number 79, Jonathan Odgood. He's 340 pounds, getting some playing time today, but he's beaten right out of his stance by Dwayne Patterson, number 86, who's really Man. showing a lot of pressure today. Greg Burns nearly had the pick right there. Jager back for his eighth punt. That's off the side of his foot. But he gets a good end-over-end -end bounce as it comes back to the middle, and a good job there by Shager, who's punted awfully well today. Inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. 13-43 left to go in the game. Cougars lead it by 11. As we look at the third quarter statistics, I'll tell you, six Pac-10 teams rank in the top 15 in the nation defensively. The Bruins are ranked 14th, and John, as you mentioned, their defense has done the job. They have done the job against uh, Washington State University, but let's take a look at the turnovers. Three by UCLA, all leading the scores, and a kickoff return for a touchdown by Washington State. That's how they have their 21 points. points. Yep. First and 10, Bledsoe gets it out to his wide receiver, C.J. Davis. And he is up shy of the 40 to the 38-yard line. Othello Henderson on that quick hitter makes a stop in a 24-yard pickup. We saw Bledsoe do this last week against Oregon State. He sees by alignment that somebody is uncovered in this particular situation. And C.J. Davis just flicks the ball over to him. And you have a first down about a 20 how many yard gain 24 yards 24 yard gain and that's an easy way to make 24 yards davis leads the pack 10 sixth in the nation receiving first and 10 and slipping behind the line of scrimmage is sean bay right there and uh, i had a chance to speak with the uh, head coach mike price and uh talk to him about the importance of this game I said all along that this is a special team, and uh, we have a special opportunity this weekend on playing UCLA. Uh, it will be the first Cougar football team to be 6-0 since 1930, 62 years. That's, that's special, and uh, that's, uh, that's, that's motivating me just talking about it. it. gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. Second and 12 from the 36, and Bledsoe trying to find his tight end, Butch Williams, the senior from Seattle. Folks in L.A. might remember his dad, Clancy Williams, played for the Rams for a number of years, slightly overthrown there. But, you know, Mike Price, yeah, Goosebumps, I think they were so loosey and they were so goosey this week, and they really were. They were having some fun of practice. I, I think that's a, a good way to sort of hide all those emotions because this really is a huge game for this football program. It absolutely is, and I really respect Mike Price and the job he's done here at Washington State. I think he's the perfect coach yeah. for this program in this town. They really love him. They love the job he's done. He's an alum. He understands it. 
He's done a fantastic job. Third and 12, they've missed on their last five third down situations. Williams is wide open and he drops it again. That's the second pass he's dropped today. On the first series, he dropped one, and that one would have been down inside the 30-yard line as he was wide open. The coverage back there by Marvin Goodwin. Marvin Goodwin ever able to overcome his injury and get back in the lineup. Drew Bledsoe has the time on the left side of your screen. You see Clarence Williams and all oh boy just double touches it and drops the pass. Would have been a sure first down. On fourth down, Johnson gets off the punt. And the fair catch being called by Tommy Bennett, who bobbled it momentarily at the 23. 41 yards on the punt. We'll be back to Pullman in a moment. Butch is the Washington State mascot, and he was dancing his feet off last night at the bonfire on homecoming weekend. And welcome back to Pullman. Attendance today, 32,208. Uh, they drew only 21,000 for their opener against Montana. And uh, I'm a little surprised maybe there aren't a few more folks here today with a 5-0 team and homecoming. Ryan Fiend heads back out there on first and 10 from the 23-yard line. They'll hand it to Williams. Breaks one tackle across the 25 to the 26. A gain of about four. Kurt Lurcher came up to make the stop. And coming up next here on ABC, Pac-10 action continues. We'll show you California and USC ranked 18th in the country. That's coming up next. And by the way, next week, it's Washington State and Southern Cal homecoming for USC. McClanahan with 10 tackles so far today to lead the way for Washington State from his middle linebacker position. Second and seven. Williams on the pitch. And he's to the 29-yard line. Gain of about four on the play. So Kevin Williams, who was uh, one of the top rushers in the Pac-10 a year ago, with the hamstring injury after the third game of the year and had the long touchdown run earlier today. I'm surprised to see him in back there. in there. Yeah. I, I thought he really injured his hamstring seriously when he did score the touchdown. Third down and four. They'll split Daly to the near side. pressure gets his feet tangled up and goes down at the 21 yard line. Jonathan Ogden, I'm sorry, Ogden, excuse me, number 79 is just having fits here. Left tackle, he's inexperienced, he's a freshman. And Dwayne Patterson is giving him all he can handle. You know, he's having trouble getting out of his stances. And he can't hear the quarterback, which really makes it tough for a tackle. Ninth punt today for Darren Shager. And Bobo calls for the fair catch at the 44-yard line. So Washington State will have good field position when we return to Pullman. It's in the AP Top 20, and uh, Terry Donahue at 10. Don James of Washington's had nine that far behind. But uh, this is not going to be one of those years. I don't think so. But Ryan Fien can play well, or if Rob Walker can come back and play well throughout the rest of the year. This is a young enough UCLA team that they can be very good next year. But we've got 10-17 left to go. Bledsoe, 8 of 21. He's had a lot of passes dropped. And that's intercepted. It's picked there. Number 23, Donnie Edwards. The second interception today by UCLA, and we shouldn't speak too soon about maybe <laughs> not being... Oh in the top 20. Our apologies to Terry Donahue on that play, and Donnie Edwards proved us wrong. He's on the left side of your screen. He's just going to hang in his zone. He's crossing patterns by the tight end again, and I think Drew Bledsoe was trying to throw it over to the deeper receiver. Donnie Edwards is in perfect position. That's one of those plays where you never really see the guy in the zone. Sally Asaya was the guy that had the hands in his face on the rush. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Boy, Ryan Fien had nowhere to go that time, and he has dropped at the 35. We'd like to pause five seconds to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves. 
Channel 7, KABC TV, Los Angeles. Well, Drew Bledsoe had completed 127 passes coming into this game and early in this game in the first half without an interception before being picked off at the end of the half. Well, he threw the Hail Mary. That didn't really count. I don't think that this one certainly was just a normal interception. Second and 11. Williams dropped at the 43-yard line by Lewis Bush, the senior from Tacoma. He has been most impressive today. Watch the fullback, Khalif Carter. You see him on the right side of your screen, number 40. I think he has responsibility for Bush there, but he didn't expect Bush to make the inside charge. Bush caught him off guard and gets the tackle for a loss. And this is what Washington State does so well. They slant their linemen. They, they charge. They bring their linebackers through gaps. It's a very attack-oriented defense. Third down and 18. 8.50. Left to go here in Pullman. Cougars lead UCLA. 28-17, out of the shotgun. Ryan Fee has got a man open downfield and a penalty marker, no. No penalty marker. The intended receiver down there for the UCLA Bruins was number 82, Avery Anderson, a freshman from Riverside. It looked like he might have been pushed behind and the back judge, it appears, started to go to his pocket. Well, not only that, Avery Anderson showed he's a freshman there. Watch him here. He misjudges the ball. He starts to slow up, and the ball is sailing. And he does get a little nudge in the back there. Greg Burns gave him a Burns, little push, yes. but he removed his hands quickly. But I think he should have kept running. Shager with his 10th punt. That's a nice high kick. And the fair catch called by Torrey Hunter at the 13-yard line. Well, Drew Bledsoe in the Washington State offense dodges a bullet with the turnover there at midfield. And, and, you know, this is where UCLA really can't capitalize offensively on a mistake by the opposing team. I'll tell you, I hate to think if UCLA was uh, had Rob Walker, had some sort of uh, uh, strength, because even though they've lost a lot of people defensively, Arnold Allay, Jameer Miller, Chalinski, this defense has played terrific football today. And right now, let's go to New York and John Saunders. John? Alabama and Tennessee. Tennessee on the march here and watch Keith Schroer. Tosses a bullet to David Horn. Three yards just gets the feed in. They're down by seven in the fourth quarter. Roger. Okay, thank you very much, John. First and ten, Washington State at the 13-yard line. Bledsoe will hand it off to Sean Bay. Right there. And he gets about three. Sally Asaya sophomore from Oceanside, California, number 55, made the stop for the Bruins. As badly as Washington State wants to score and maybe move the ball against UCLA today, then we're going to start working on the clock right now. That's what that play is designed to do, is get some yards and also work on the clock. I think they'd like to drive against UCLA. Oh, but I think it would be very good for their confidence, but it just hasn't, hasn't happened. If time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report featuring scores and highlights from across the country as we've got a timeout called by Washington State as they use their first of the second half. 7.53 left to go from Pullman. UCLA, the uh, fifth-year senior transfer from UC Santa Barbara, and uh, had a couple fairly good series, threw some nice passes that were dropped, and then threw the interception, which Childs brought back for the touchdown. So potentially... He might get back into the game. Second and eight for Washington State from the 15-yard line. C.J. Davis goes in motion to the far side. Using a lot of the clock right now. Sean Bay right there, very close to a first down at the 24-yard line. And Kosey Littleton, a junior from Linwood, California, and Donnie Edwards, we've called his name, a number of times. We talk about vision by a running back right there. Michael Williams, number 14, was coming through. Sean Bay right there saw it, cut it back, and made it first down. So that's a key first down by the Washington State offense, and they have been far and few between today. One of the things that uh, Mike Price told us the other day was, John, he was going to run fewer plays but more formations. Right. So how how is that? I think he wants to just cut down and run everything and execute it well. First and 10 from the 24th, Lexo. And good coverage right there. The intended receiver was Philip Bobo. But to answer your question, 
you can run certain plays from different formations and just give that that play a different feel or a different look to the defense they call it disguising your offensive plays a lot of teams do that i think the washington redskins make that probably the most famous because they only have about eight or ten running plays and we heard today from talking to the line coach george yarno and john mcdonnell for washington state that they only have four different running plays i mean maybe with two quarterback sneaks or a draw you have six different running plays but they don't do a lot they try and disguise it second and ten from the 24. Sean Bay right there met immediately by Sally Asaya, the nose tackle, 6'4 and 285, as the Cougars want to try to milk that clock as it moves down to the seven-minute mark. But with an 11-point lead, you can't be too safe. Oh, John, sorry about that. Dartmouth beat Yale today. Oh, gosh. Well, I guess you can't have everything in the Ivy League, can you? No, as long as you get an education, that's yes, all, that's right? that's true. Third down situation, the Cougars 3 of 12, and they have missed their last six, but the last one, they had Williams wide open, and he dropped the ball. Third down and nine. UCLA is bringing their backers. Bledsoe gets it to Brett Carolyn, the tight end, and a nice defensive play by Donnie Edwards, and they're going to be just shy of the first down. But we were wondering when Mike Price would go to the sure-handed Brett Carolyn because it seems like the tight end's been open a number of times. Brett Carolyn had the best hands on the team. He caught a touchdown pass on a similar dragging pattern, but that was out of a close formation. Clarence Williams had his chances to catch this kind of pass today, but they inserted Carolyn, and he is close to the first down, but he doesn't quite get it. UCLA going for the strip there, too. Boy, Donnie Edwards made a really nice play. But just shy of the first down, fourth and one. And Steve Johnson to put it to Tommy Bennett. Good looking punt right there. High spiral. He's going to let it go. And a smart move because it goes into the end zone. And with 5.52 left to go, 68 yards on the punt. And that was his career best right there. UCLA will take it first and 10 from the 20 yard line with 552 left to go we saw Barnes warming up on the sidelines and UCLA still standing there haven't brought their offense but it looks like Ryan Fien will be the man well if Ryan Fien starts next week then you'll officially have four different starting quarterbacks in seven games for UCLA we noticed as you look at the ABC Sports Board earlier, Arizona in the process of upsetting Stanford 21 to 6, and that Arizona defense must be for real. Shutting down Miami like they did, and Stanford with a very good offense. Out of the shotgun, high snap. Bean is able to throw it downfield, and what a catch right there. Penalty marker goes down, but a beautiful grab by Kevin Jordan, the redshirt freshman, and McClanahan for Washington State is rolling on the turf. Washington State's middle linebacker, Anthony McClanahan, shaken up on that play. But there is a penalty marker down. Holding is going to be the call against UCLA. But what a terrific catch right there by Kevin Jordan. Ryan Fee put some zip on that pass. Kevin Jordan caught a similar hook out, hook pattern like that uh, toward the end of the first half. And uh, he's a possession receiver. That's the kind of pass he catches well. But uh, that ball was zipped so hard. Let's watch Kevin Jordan. He's going to set up a field. A little bit of a stutter move. He comes inside. And he has to fight this ball to stay with it. I mean, that ball had a lot of speed on it. You know, receivers, if they get oh. their hands, their fingers over the top of the pass, it's a lot easier to handle. You can see his fingers were on the bottom there. McClanahan's leg, as he was hitting the turf, spun out and hit one of his teammates as he was coming by. Let's take a look, because we were able to see where McClanahan, it was the injury to his left leg. And he's out of your picture There's right there at 41. Now he'll come back in. And as he comes to the turf, watch one of his teammates come running by right there. See his leg? See his teammate? Caught him right on the knee, and it looked oh, yeah. like his knee hyperextended, possibly. It could be. That was it Brian Ford, 69. Yeah, he just kicked that around, didn't he? But McClanahan is leaving the field under his own power. That's why you have anterior cruciates. It keeps your leg from hyperextending like that. So it's good to see McClanahan up and around, and he's okay. First and 22, the ball back on the eight-yard line for Ryan Fiend. 
the true freshman from Simi Valley, the option. And look at this, the tackle on Williams. Is it a safety? Yes. Dwayne Patterson, 86, the sophomore from Oakland. Boy, Patterson almost had a pitch earlier in the game. He is not respecting the quarterback at all. Watch number 86 on the right side. He sees the pitch all the way, and he, that was very close to not being a safety, but the referee does call it a safety. Also, T.J. Folkers was there to finish off the play. And look at the pose. <laughs> we saw Desmond do the Heisman pose last year. We've got Dwayne Patterson doing the safety first pose. Either that is a newfangled way of yeah. praying. I don't know. But I think I think all those defensive guys know how to make that safety pose. Washington State now 30 to 17 over UCLA. Here on the Palouse, on the campus of Washington State University in Pullman. Martin Stadium. 30-17. Washington State looking to go 6-0 for the first time since 1930 in the free kick by Darren Shager. And Torrey Hunter will take it. And Hunter across the 40 to the 42-yard line and with 5.25 left to go. And a 13-point lead. The defense for Washington State, which hasn't had much recognition, and the reality is they've been pounded pretty good in recent years, has really jumped up and played the premier role today they have. as the UCLA defense has really stymied Drew Bledsoe and the Cougars. But that's what football is all about, man. You're not going to be good every time you come out. I don't that's think That's why so. it's a team game, huh? <laughs> that's right. And I think you look at the scoreboard and people say, oh boy, Washington State's offense did a great job. They have 30 points today. Three scores off turnovers, one off a kickoff, and one a defensive safety. So the defense has done it today for Washington State. Bledsoe to throw it. Near side to Brett Carolyn. At the 40-yard line, the diving attempt by the tight end from Nevada, California. Sally Asaya putting some pressure on Bledsoe. That stops the clock with 5.21 left to go. You know, it's interesting. The University of Idaho in Moscow is just about eight miles down the road. They're 6-0, and and they're playing up State Highway 195 in Cheney against uh, Eastern Washington today. So you've got uh, two undefeated teams some good in football. the same neighborhood. Some you good bet. football around here. C.J. Davis in motion on second and ten. Shambay right there, right up the middle. And he gets about three. And they're going to try to work that clock as much as they possibly can here. I think after they missed the initial pass to Carolyn on the uh, sidelines, they said, let's just run the ball, run the clock out. UCLA is no threat offensively against Washington State's defense. They have the ball at midfield, and they should just work on the clock. It's been since World War II that uh, UCLA was 0-3 in the Pac-10. Of course, back then wasn't the Pac-10, but in the conference. And it's been 62 years since Washington State is 6-0. End around. Bobo has got some room. Philip Bobo to midfield. It's going to be just shy of the first down he needed to get to the 49-yard line. Bradley Craig, number 35, came up to make the tackle. He didn't get out of bounds, so the clock will continue to run. Washington State trying to take advantage of the over-aggressiveness of the UCLA defense. Gets a reverse play out to Philip Bobo. Bradley Craig played his ground. I mean, he's, he's responsible for outside contain. He did a real nice job fighting off the blocker, making the tackle. The 11th punt today for Steve Johnson as Tommy Bennett is back at the 10-yard line. End over end kick. Bennett calls the fair catch at the 18. And that's where UCLA will start 33 yards on the punt. 3.54 left to go. The Bruins have all of their timeouts remaining. People here starting to sense the victory. 6-0 for the first time since 1930. Washington State is obviously very excited about their football program this year. Well, it also makes them 3-0 in the Pac-10, which they had never done before. The 
but there's a lot of ground yet to cover as they have to play USC next week in Stanford in Washington as Ryan Fiend will try to make some magic down the middle the pass caught by Mike Wynn at the 20 yard line he is gang tackle there Ryan Fiend seems to be limping around a little bit too I think he got hit on that play <laughs> that's all Terry Johnny do with me to have this young man go down with an injury it's been some kind of year for UCLA I don't know they've said that they've never ever been through anything quite like this to have so many key players I mean they have six captains on this team and three didn't make the trip because of injury I mean the, the cover of their media guide you can take off uh, the three <laughs> of the four guys that are on the cover La Chapelle has got the broken ribs we haven't talked about him today he tried to play last week couldn't do it First and 10, 23-yard line, clock running, 325, Darren Washington to the outside. Darren Washington gets out of bounds. Nice job there as he gets the first down at the 35-yard line. Torrey Hunter brings him down, but the 11-yard pickup enough for the first down. And keep in mind, folks, this is a 13-point lead right now. And as you saw the comeback by Kansas today, you saw the score earlier, Kansas came back uh, against Iowa State. Anything is possible. 319. Left to go. Bean will swing it out near side and the pass off the hands of James Milliner, redshirt freshman backup fullback. And I want to announce right now the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Donnie Edwards from UCLA has had an outstanding afternoon with an interception and nine tackles. And Ron Childs from Washington State, four tackles, the fumble recovery, and the interception return for the touchdown. And Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Childs was a Pac-10 Player of the Week against Arizona earlier this year. Second and 10 from the 36-yard line. Throwing downfield, Avery Anderson, the intended receiver, and defensively is Greg Burns. And his confidence level has to be soaring because this is a guy everybody's picked on this year, and he's come up with some nice plays today. Coach Mike Price was a little worried about his demeanor. He said he's a soft-spoken guy, and he likes to see his quarterbacks get a little more cocky. This, this, this pass was a little bit underthrown. Greg Burns is definitely outsized on that particular play. Avery Anderson goes up for it, tries to shield him with his body, but Burns gets up and makes a really nice play for a cornerback, and he's very excited about that. And also, being from Los Angeles, he's doubly excited about it. Third down and 10. Bean looking near side, and the pass intended for number 30, Darren Washington, that's off his hands. That's a pass he's tried to throw twice now. The one thing that worried Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator for UCLA, about being was his touch on the short passes. You can see twice where he didn't give the running back an angle to catch the pass by throwing the ball a little bit upfield. Both those passes were right over the running back's head in that instance, and that time Darren Washington couldn't handle it. 3.04 left to go on a fourth down. Darren Shager has been a busy guy. This is his 11th punt. Both teams, by the way, have punted 11 times today. Good kick by Shager Bobo going back to the 21-yard line. And good job there. He's learned a lot since that fumble <laughs> early in the game. He just took it straight up the middle. We've got an official down on the play. That's what he should have done at the end of the first half, and he didn't, and this time he did. Paul Pomecki, the snapper, came down to make the stop. We talked to uh, Drew Bledsoe and talked to him about his dream football game. Um, probably since I was... Um since I decided I was going to come to Washington State, probably the, the dream uh, game, the dream uh, situation for me would now to be uh, undefeated, have the Huskies be undefeated at the end of the season, going into the Apple Cup and have the Apple Cup be the deciding game for the, for the national championship in the Rose Bowl. So that would know, be the dream sequence um, of all of them that I can think of uh, to this point. Well, right now with 2.54 to go, is team leading 30-17. Could be one step yeah. closer. He's 9 of 25 for 100 and... 
seven yards, a touchdown and two interceptions as they'll hand it to Shambe right there. And he does a good job to stay in bounds right there. Nicely done. I'll tell you, it must have been a tough decision for Drew Bledsoe as there's a UCLA player down at the 23-yard line. Both of his parents went to the University of Washington. As I mentioned earlier, his grandfather went to Washington State. But, you know, he made the decision to come here because he wanted to help get this program back on the map. And Mike Christ, the time we've spent with him, is a, a terrific salesman. Sally Asaya is the man down for UCLA. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Chevy Trucks. Trucks that you can depend on. The trucks that last. Two-day priority mail service from your post office. By the 25th anniversary diamond. A brilliant celebration of the loving marriage. And by the Canon CJ10 full color copier printer scanner. Now the power of color is yours. There's Price and Bledsoe. But, you know, Mike Price is a guy I think that gets very... Uh, he, he loves to recruit. He told us he went to 13 different cities last spring talking to quarterbacks and basically what he sells to his recruits, especially a quarterback, is we've started this quarterback tradition here. You go back to Jack Thompson, the throw in Samoa. You got Mark Rippian. And this is the play here just a moment ago where the injury Sally was Sally Asai. see the left guard roll up on mm -hmm. him. That's Josh Dunning, number 61. Maybe you can take that back a little bit. Josh Dunning, number 61, is the left guard, and he rolls into the nose guard. And that's why nose tackles have trouble. They're always going against one or two different blockers. It's a combination block between the left guard and the center. Sally Asali gets rolled up on. I hope his knee's okay. But, you know, getting back to your point today, three quarterbacks from the NFC East have come from these two schools. Troy Aikman, Tim Rosenball with the Cardinals, and, of course, Mark Rippon with the world champion Washington Redskins. But, of course, you know, Price is selling Washington State. That's what he's selling. Rippon and Rosenball and Jack Thompson and the great history of quarterbacks. Sean Bay right there. Sean Bay means heart of the lion. And a penalty marker goes down, a late flag. That's the kind of name you want out of your running back. Isn't it better than wing of the dove? <laughs> <or something laughs> You're absolutely right there. Absolutely right there. As you take a look at some of the scores from around the country, Miami and Michigan continue to roll. But to follow up on your point, I think, uh, you know, certainly Drew Bledsoe made the decision to come here to help this program turn around rather than going to an established program. And some kids out of high school like play that. Is the first they like After the play with a dead ball foul, personal foul on the offense. First and 25. Yeah, Sammy, that's stupid. I mean, you don't, okay. you've got to be more mature than that. With 216 to go in a game that you lead by 13. 19. 19 penalties for 93 yards for Washington State. I mean, this, this, is, uh, this is a group, on offense at least, that uh, returned intact. As a matter of fact, had another player come back who had been injured for a year. And Terry Donahue, at least, I guess on the bright side, will have a whole week to work with Ryan Fien or if Rob Walker is available or John Barnes. It'll be the quarterback du jour for the UCLA offense. There you go. A little tattoo above the right ankle there. <laughs> a big offensive lineman can do that. First and 25 with less than two minutes to go. And the handoff once again to Sean Bay right fair. Now, Mike Price can go over the five... Oh, the, the ball's picked up. Now they're waving it. No, they're saying he was down. They're saying he was down. That's Carl Greenwood who picked it up and scored a touchdown, but you are right. Sean Bay right there was ruled down on He was that down play. at the 34-yard line. Boy, that would have put a different twist in yeah, this game. Absolutely. But anyway, I was mentioning Price can go over the 500 career mark, uh, 46 and uh, 44 at Weber State, and this will be his 19th victory at Washington State University. As the clock now continues to run, the Bruins have three timeouts. It's a second down and 18 after that uh, penalty against the Cougars. I see no willingness for the Bruins to use their timeouts, though, at least so far. Right fair is 20 carries, 100 yards rushing. And when he rushes for over 100 yards, good things happen to the Washington State football team. Well, the Cougars run the ball twice, and then they throw it three times. That's their run-to-pass ratio. Second down. Really sloppy play at the end of the game here, though, for the Cougars. I mean, they have penalties, and they've had uh, 
delay of games. They've had all sorts well, of things. They put the ball on the ground there. Yeah. It could have jeopardized, uh, even though it wasn't a fumble, it was close to being one. I mean, this hasn't been an impressive performance by a team that leads the Pac-10 in most offensive categories. And against a defense, a solid defense, a great secondary for UCLA, but the front seven, a lot of the top players out for UCLA in this game. So right fair carries one more time. Carrick O'Quinn makes the tackle. Sean Bay right fair now with the 12 100 plus yardage performances in his career and uh, came into this game second in the Pac-10 behind Russell White. But Russell White's out with an injury and won't play in that game coming up next year on ABC. Is it turf toe that he has? Turf toe, yeah, and a, a pulled groin. <laughs> this was the first game on artificial turf for uh, UCLA this year. They were two and one last year on it. <laughs> So timeout down on the field. ABC uh, in Pasadena. Well, that's, <laughs> that's that's a possibility. Be kind of neat, I guess, if it came down to that November 21st game here in Pullman between uh, Washington State and Washington. The state would rock if that wow. if that occurred. I don't know. There's still a lot of football to play, and everybody always likes to look ahead, but there's a lot of football to play for both schools until they get to the Apple Cup. i got to tell you what, though. They've got a leg up on a lot of teams in the Pac-10 because Washington State's already beaten Arizona, and it's, it's coming to the forefront right now that Arizona is a pretty darn good football team. Yeah, that's a team I wouldn't want to play down the stretch. Oh. Dick Tomey's really got that Desert Swarm defense moving. There's the alumni band here for homecoming weekend. And with 111 left to go. It's a third down and 20. UCLA with two timeouts remaining. will tell you that next week uh, Washington State and Southern Cal will be one of our regional games here on ABC so the, uh, the Cougars will take that 6-0 mark down to uh, USC for homecoming so they'll have uh, two homecoming weekends in a row and with a minute and one second left timeouts called by UCLA on a fourth down and 20 so one more time Washington State and their punter, Steve Johnson. The 12th punt today. <laughs> Something for the number one offense in the country, isn't it? Punt 12 punt. I would think UCLA has got to go after this punt right now. <laughs> Bennett will take it, and he drops it, but covers it at the 27-yard line. T.J. Folkers uh, is kind of taken over from Childs on the special teams for getting down there in a hurry. And now with 54 seconds left to go, the fans here at Martin Stadium and Pullman come to their feet. They acknowledge the good play of the defense today. It's done an outstanding job all afternoon. Well, it's a mark of a good team, I think, if, if your offense isn't playing well and the secondary for UCLA, you certainly have to give a lot of credit to today and shutting down the passing game of Drew Bledsoe and his fine receivers. Then you have another phase of your game, and this is something Washington State has not had in the past. It's a final now. Arizona has beaten Stanford. First and ten. Ryan Fien will throw it near side. And Darren Washington, the intended receiver. So that's three times he's tried that pass. I, I would suggest that he try and do that in practice this week and not throw it for the rest of the game, even though there's only 50 seconds left in this game. But that, that's a pass that Ryan Fiend doesn't quite have the handle on yet. UCLA, by the way, will play Arizona State next week. They have California, Oregon State, Oregon, and USC down the road. Second and 10 with 50 seconds left to go. Well, the future is now for UCLA and this young man, Ryan Fien. He heaves it downfield. The intended receiver there is number four for the uh, Bruins of UCLA, and that's Kevin Jordan. 
Tori Hunter back on the coverage. And if this final score, or this score right now, becomes a final, 30-17 will be the biggest margin of victory for Washington State against UCLA since 1958. I guess you're pretty good if uh, you start getting picky about your wins. And there's the Washington State schedule for the rest of the year at USC, homecoming next week on ABC. Oregon, Arizona State. Two tough ones on the road at SC and Stanford. As Ryan Fien will throw it downfield, and he's got Jordan there. That should be enough for the first down at the 40-yard line. I tell you, I think they can do something with this kid. Uh, John, yes, I do. With, with a week's practice, he's shown a lot of poise there. To me, he looks to be more of a drop-back sort of quarterback, although they say he ran the option in high school. I like his arm. He's got a nice, strong, quick delivery. As he'll throw it down to Avery Anderson, who is stuck at the 33-yard line for Washington State, Daryl Hamilton, a senior from Compton, California, made the big-time hit. What a monster hit by Hamilton. <laughs> When you talk about Fiend and all the things he'll learn to do as a quarterback, and yes, he is absolutely going to learn these things. This is one of the things he can't do, and that's hang out a wide receiver. Good inside release. There's a free safety. This is. That's a big-time college hey, hit right there. There's, a not, there's not enough hurts. scholarship money to take those kind of hits. <laughs> that's an NFL kind of hit. Second and ten from the 40. Dean is dumped back there. The man who got through and made the sack was Chris Frank. Fifth sack today of UCLA quarterbacks as Frank, a senior from Eugene, Oregon, a backup, dumps Dean back at the 28-yard line, and UCLA is going to burn their final timeout. Two plays back-to-back -back by some backups for Washington State. Darrell Hamilton on the big hit in the secondary, and now Chris Frank gets a nice rush in, and I think uh, it's pretty much a little cold water there for the coach, not a la Deion Sanders, but more <laughs> like a, in a winning way, and Mike Price and his team know that they're now 6-0, and and he gets a cold shower. Well, congratulations all around. Uh, they did it in a much different way than we anticipated. They yes, they did. Bean just throws it up in the air. And yeah, it's picked off. Picked off by number three, Curtis Gethers, a backup safety. And that's the final play of the game in Washington State. Is 6-0 for the first time since 1930 when they won the conference.